But there we are. Uh, right, let's go to the Grand Prix this afternoon, uh, shall we? Harry Benjamin getting ready for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Afternoon, Harry. Afternoon, Mark. Yeah, we are uh, just about northeast, uh, 12 miles northeast of Budapest at the Hungara Ring, which has played host to the Grand Prix every year since 1986. And it was mixed conditions in yesterday's qualifying. Temperature, though, higher today, about 28 degrees, 20% chance of rain, and cars just making their way around, beginning uh, to form up uh, on the grid before they'll get out and uh, make their usual loo breaks before we get things started. Mark Priestley, uh, the former McLaren F1 mechanic, is alongside me to, to call all the action. It's the two McLarens on the front row. Lando Norris on pole position. Oscar Piastri is alongside him. Pressure on, though, to convert that into a 1-2 come the chequered flag. Yeah, there's uh, there's always pressure in Formula 1, but you could argue that over the, the past sort of three, four, five races, McLaren have let one or two potential victories slip through their fingers, and they won't want to do that again. It might be, you know, in the back of their minds. They need to get decisions right. They're in the prime seats, of course. It's not the easiest circuit to overtake on. Locking out the front row with both of their cars does mean that they might be able to use strategy of, of both of those cars in a sort of team effort to try and hold back what will be a, a pretty aggressively chasing Red Bull car of Max Verstappen sitting in third. Yeah, what are we expecting strategy-wise then? We know this is a track that is a bit tricky to overtake on. There's two DRS zones, but uh, what, there's 14 turns. It's just over about 4.3 kilometers, 2.7 miles. How can Verstappen and even those behind mount a challenge to the McLarens? Well, the first opportunity is clearly going to be at the start of the race. There's been one or two little question marks over Lando Norris's starts in recent races. I don't think it's a big problem. I'm sure Lando's got that under control, but that's an opportunity. There's a long run down to turn one. That Red Bull is very quick in a straight line. So if they can get a good slipstream from Verstappen getting a good launch, he might be able to make a, a, an opportunistic move into the first corner. But after that, it really is going to be around strategy. And, you know, it could largely depend on temperatures. If we get very, very very high temperatures, and I'm talking about track temperatures, which we could well see, you might be forced into the harder of the three compounds of tyre being the prime tyre, the, the, the optimum tyre for the race. McLaren don't have any new sets of those available, whereas Red Bull do have one of those. So if the race swings that way, it could be that the hard tyre might favour the Red Bull. But if it's a little bit cooler, as in not extreme temperatures, then it might favour the medium tyre, and McLaren do have those. So we've got to keep an eye on temperatures because that could be one of the biggest differences here. Well, one thing before, to keep an eye on we even talk about tyres we just heard uh, hearing that Lando Norris on the radio saying there is something wrong with his throttle he just pulled up on the grid a little bit of concern from the mechanics uh, that are surrounding his car now just taking a look at that uh, what could that be? Well, hopefully nothing serious. It could be something as simple as something's in the cockpit. Something's been left in there. There might be something on the bottom of his shoe. There could be anything that just feels a tiny bit uncomfortable. Or it could be something in the software that means that when he presses the throttle, he's not getting the expected power delivery from the power unit. So hopefully all of those things are fixable. They've got a little bit of time, still about half an hour until the race gets underway. So the team will be able to make some changes if necessary on the grid. Hopefully nothing that's going to cause him too many problems. Well, we'll keep you up to date with that Oscar Piastri who will start alongside Lando Norris out of his car chatting with his trainer and his engineer and just keeping cool calm and collected Oscar Piastri going for what could be his first Grand Prix win as well later on this afternoon and Verstappen just behind now Verstappen was frustrated after qualifying Red Bull bringing a lot of upgrades this weekend but I don't think anybody would have been more frustrated than his teammate Sergio Perez there is so much scrutiny on the Mexican at the moment uh, and a crash out in the first part of qualifying yeah if ever he needed a strong weekend it was this one uh, and it started well friday looked good he had his best friday in a long long time the pace was there for the mexican driver but when it came to it and the pressure was on in qualifying yeah crashing out heavily meaning that he, he crashed out in q1 didn't make it through to the latter stages of qualifying and it's a disastrous way for him to prepare for what will now be a very difficult grand prix where a, a circuit that's not the easiest to overtake on he's going to struggle to make too much progress from there and the pressure is on not just in the, the short term but the pressure for his Formula 1 career you know there's talk of him even being replaced at Red Bull before this season finishes we're coming up to a summer break uh, after the next Grand Prix in Belgium at the weekend that follows this one 
this could well be the last thing he does in Formula One at this point. This is how strange Formula One is at the moment, right? Sergio Perez was offered a contract extension a few weeks ago and now suddenly looks like he might not see it past the halfway distance mark in this uh, in this longest ever season of Formula One. He starts 16th ahead of George Russell, who also had a bit of a shocker in qualifying. Yeah, another driver well out of position because the Mercedes, I mean, look, Mercedes have won the last two Grand Prix. They've been developing that car to a point where it's now right up in the mix with the likes of McLaren and Red Bull and Ferrari. So they'll be hugely disappointed. They've got Lewis Hamilton much further up in fifth, but they needed both of those cars in there to really have a shot to, at taking on the likes of Verstappen and Carlos Sainz and Leclerc and the Ferrari. Those are the people they need to be fighting with. So George Russell all the way back there with Perez. That'll be his battle today, is fighting Perez, but to get into the points, it's going to be a tall order. Yeah, it will be. You mentioned his teammate Lewis Hamilton starts in fifth. He is statistically the most successful man around this circuit. Eight times a winner here at the Hungaroring. Toto Wolff described Mercedes qualifying as a total underperformance from everyone involved. We were expecting Hamilton, especially off the back of that sensational win in Silverstone, back-to-back -back wins with George Russell getting the win in Austria as well. What's going against them here? Well, temperature is one big key factor. Their car doesn't perform well in higher temperatures. And in yesterday's qualifying, the temperature dropped a little bit. That's why we saw a little bit better performance from at least Hamilton. But today we've got much higher temperatures, as you mentioned earlier on, already over 28 degrees, a track temperature up at 47. That's only going to increase as the afternoon rolls on. That's not going to suit the Mercedes. So from a Lewis Hamilton point of view in fifth place, I think that's about what he needs to try and hang on to and not slip further back, as opposed to perhaps trying to replicate that brilliant win in Silverstone a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely. Well, looking to try and take a win that uh, perhaps has eluded him of recent races will be Lando Norris, who starts on that pole position in his McLaren. Uh, we can actually hear from him on the grid uh, speaking to Formula One's Laura Winter. Lando Norris, congratulations for pole yesterday. That car over one lap has come alive for you guys. What does it look like in race pace? Um, fairly similar, honestly. Uh, good pace, close. Uh, I mean, I'm on pole, but two guys within half a tenth of me, so it's not going to be easy, but uh, we're in a good position, and as a team, we're in a great position, so I'm excited to see what we can do. You do have your teammate alongside you. Have you guys spoken about how to do this, how to take that start, and how to maximize both team ambitions and personal ambitions? Uh, yep, and pretty much same as normal. So uh, we both drive, we both want to fight, we both want to win, so... Um, just uh, yeah, do what normally normally do because that's always good. Strategy could be important today. It will be important, likely. Uh, how much faith, confidence do you have in executing this one today? A lot. All I need. Thank you very much, Lando. Good luck. Well, Lando Norris talking to Laura Winter on the grid just a few moments ago. Sounds pretty cool, calm and collected, it has to be said. Still a little bit of work uh, going on on the front end of his McLaren. Uh, there's a little hatch almost on, on the front, at uh, the top of the front nose, which uh, currently mechanic has two hands uh, down the middle. What are they looking at there? Something to do with that throttle issue? Yeah, that's the access hatch for the, the throttle pedal or the pedal box. So it tells you it's something mechanical. So it could be something in the adjustment or the positioning of that pedal. But uh, again, it shouldn't really be any Thing that's too serious I hope and of course they'll be hoping as well uh, lots of people who are very very much experts in that field that are on hand to sort any problems at this moment uh, well we'll keep you up to date with how that is looking but there doesn't seem to be too much panic going on down at McLaren for the time being uh, Max Verstappen is getting himself uh, ready and prepped ahead of the 70 laps uh, we said he started uh, it, we starts in third for this Grand Prix frustrated after yesterday's qualifying uh, he caught up with Laura Winter a few moments to go as well yeah yes it was maybe not ideal but hopefully the car comes a bit more alive in the race that's what we're hoping for um so yeah i'm just hoping for a good stable balance that we can um yeah try to follow the mclarens today uh, I, I still think of course they are going to be very very fast and then uh yeah we'll uh, we'll see i mean there's still a lot of races left and we uh, just keep on uh, pushing you know try to to be better Data suggests on long run pace, certainly you are quicker than the McLarens. How will you look to open the doors to optimize that today? We must be looking at different data then. But uh, yeah, for me, um, I think the, the long runs are okay. But um, I think when it really matters and you have to push um, the last few races, we have been lacking a little bit. And I just hope that we made the right uh, the right calls in, um, in terms of setup for, for today that we um, yeah, have a good race car.
it's going to be important as well to get the right call strategically at the right time as well, isn't it, here? Yeah. And Red Bull is so good at doing that. Yeah, we've been good at that lately. Um, yeah, it's always uh, very heavy on, on tyres. You never know what, what can happen to other race, so we'll, we'll keep that into uh, keep that in, in mind and uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll uh, find out soon how quick we are. Max Verstappen there starts the Grand Prix from third place. The man who currently leads the championship by 84 points ahead of Lando Norris's next closest rival. In the constructors, Red Bull lead the way, 373 points. They're 71 ahead of actually Ferrari in second. It's McLaren, though, who have the momentum at the moment, and they're really closing in on Ferrari for that second place. Ferrari this weekend. I feel like we haven't spoken much about them, Mark, because it's just been a little bit anonymous. Carlos Sainz is fourth, Charles Leclerc starts sixth. It's not terrible, but for the second, currently second in the Constructors' Championship, that's not what they need to be doing. No, the fact they're second in the Constructors' Championship really came about because of a, a better start to the season. They had a, you know, they were the second best team for the first part of this championship. But in recent rounds, I think less because of something Ferrari have done and more because of the likes of McLaren and Mercedes taking giant leaps forward, Ferrari have been shuffled down the order from the second best team to, at times, the fourth best team. And that's what we're seeing. So the fact that they are in and around that sort of sixth, uh, fourth and sixth place, I think it's about where they are right now. They need to take some giant steps forward in terms of developing that car. A couple of their upgrades just haven't really worked for them. And they're trying to now figure out what the cause of that was. And I'm sure as we go through that summer break, we'll see a lot of work being placed at Ferrari and trying to bring them back on, on form. Well, there are a lot of storylines to watch out for up and down the grid this afternoon. The grandstands are packed, 70 laps ahead of us. Lando Norris trying to take a win that he feels might have eluded him over the last few races. Oscar Piastri going for his first Grand Prix and Max Verstappen trying to take them both on behind. We're looking forward to the Hungarian Grand Prix. Mark uh, will be online on the BBC Sport website and app ahead of Lights Out uh, from 2 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, BBC Sport website and app to listen to the F1. F1 on 5 Live. Hello and a very warm welcome to Hungary. Formula One is in Budapest this weekend for the 13th round of the season. We're in Mogurod in the Three Springs Valley, about 12 miles northeast of Budapest at the Hungaroring, which has played host to Formula One every year since 1986. A track with a mix of low and medium speed corners, sharp changes of direction with 14 corners, six to the left and eight to the right. And after mixed conditions in yesterday's qualifying, temperature which is higher today, about 28 degrees Celsius, track temperature 43 and a half degrees with a 20% chance of rain. My name is Harry Benjamin and alongside me guiding you through all the coverage of the Grand Prix this afternoon is the former McLaren F1 mechanic, Mark Priestley. Mark, it's the two McLarens that lock out the front row. First time in over a decade that's happened and happened unbelievably. Lando Norris on pole position, Oscar Piastri is alongside him. But there's been a bit of drama in the last 10 or so minutes surrounding Lando Norris's car. Uh, yeah, drama that's still going on. So uh, Lando reporting that his throttle pedal felt a little bit different on the lap uh, on the way to the grid uh, and consequently the team have now taken the front end of the car apart there's a lot of people looking concerned around their hands in the top of the cockpit from the mechanics and they've actually got an FIA representative on standby which normally means that the team have had to ask the FIA for permission to change a component now it could just be that the sort of spring behind the throttle pedal or the throttle pedal sensor it could be it's a fairly simple change a fairly simple uh, component to switch out but not the sort of preparation they would ideally like to have so close to the start. No, not at all. We'll uh, keep you informed as to how that progresses uh, in the next uh, few moments. Uh Lights out in uh, at two o'clock this afternoon, UK time, uh, and uh, we'll uh, three o'clock local in Budapest for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Seventy laps ahead of us as well, uh, and also joining us is the BBC's F1 correspondent Andrew Benson. Uh, Andrew, it's slightly different conditions today compared to qualifying yesterday. Uh, what are you expecting from the next seventy laps of the Hungarian Grand Prix? 
Well, it's uh, sunny and hot. Uh, it's not quite 30 degrees yet, Harry, but uh, it's not far off uh, 29, something like that. So the tyres are going to get quite a workout. We're expecting a couple of stops. Um, McLaren and Red Bull, uh, at least McLaren and Max Verstappen and Ferrari have exactly the same tyre allocation. So two sets of mediums and one hard. So that's what we'd expect them to do. Uh, and pretty much the same condition as well, all new. So um, no differences there. And of course, the teams for the teams, it's a uh, journey into the unknown in the race because they've only done 10 laps or so on these tyres in these temperatures in practice um, so the second half of every stint they'll be wondering how the tyres are going to hang on basically um, and of course because the tyres wear out so quickly the undercut which is stopping first and gaining track position by going fast on new tyres is the, probably the dominant strategy choice to overtake someone but um, uh, then you've got to be careful not to stop too early because uh, then you run out of tyres at the end venturing into the unknown that is what we like to hear so there is storylines up and down the grid to look out for uh, over uh, the next couple of hours when we get this grand prix started uh, but we can go down to the grid uh, where the pole sitter lando norris caught up with formula one's laura winter a few moments ago Lando Norris, congratulations for pole yesterday. That car over one lap has come alive for you guys. What does it look like in race pace? Um, fairly similar, honestly. Uh, good pace, close. Uh, I mean, I'm on pole, but two guys within half a tenth of me, so it's not going to be easy, but uh, we're in a good position, and as a team, we're in a great position, so I'm excited to see what we can do. You do have your teammate alongside you. Have you guys spoken about how to do this, how to take that start and how to maximize both team ambitions and personal ambitions? Uh, yep, and pretty much same as normal. So uh, we both drive, we both want to fight, we both want to win. So um, just uh, yeah, do what we normally do because that's always good. Strategy could be important today, it will be important likely. Uh, how much faith, confidence do you have in executing this one today? A lot. All I need. Thank you very much, Lando. Good luck. Lando Norris sounding confident, uh, and now he is just standing with an umbrella over his head, not for any rain, but for the sheer intensity of the heat to uh, block the sun away. Looking at his car, still being worked on with uh, members of the team surrounding that McLaren, and indeed some FIA delegates watching too. His teammate Oscar Piastri on the right-hand side of the grid, the dirtier side of the grid, just putting his balaclava on now and getting into the zone. Mark, how much pressure is there on McLaren now to, to convert this? 1-2 lockout in qualifying to a 1-2 race win. Uh, there's always pressure, but that pressure intensifies when you get to the front. You know, McLaren have joined the party at the front in recent rounds. They are now contenders at every Grand Prix, and that means there's a, a huge number more eyeballs on you. Your decisions are scrutinised, and, and they've, you know, felt the, the sort of wrong end of that recently when they've made some decisions that perhaps have cost them the opportunity to win at recent rounds. Um, you know, everyone's got an opinion on what you're doing now because you're at the front end. So, yes, the pressure's there, but look, these are the moments they've been dreaming of for the last decade or so since they had an opportunity like this now they're there they've got the right people in place they're there because they're good enough and i'm pretty sure they're going to have a, a great afternoon in, and hopefully execute this with the benefit of the experience of those mistakes that have come in recent rounds that hopefully means they won't make those again well let's hear from the man starting in second oscar piastri talking to laura winter Hello, Oscar. P2, so, so close to your first F1 Grand Prix poll. Um, I'm sure there are a few what-ifs from yesterday, but it's a brilliant starting position for the race. Lando saying the race pace looks very good. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, I think I would. Um, it's a bit unclear what, what Max's pace is going to be like. We ran kind of off-sequence with tyres on, uh, on Friday and, and Saturday morning, so um, I'm sure he'll be in the fight as well, but... Um, no, our car has been really competitive this weekend and uh, hopefully we can take advantage of that today. How do you personally balance the team game, which I know is of the utmost importance, with your own personal ambitions for a first Grand Prix win? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's a, a great opportunity for the team to score a lot of points. Um, you know, I think from their point of view, they don't care which order we come in as long as it's first and second. So, uh, you know, we've raced around each other a lot in the last 18 months and uh, you know, we know what's expected of us, so um, of course we'll, we'll both go for the win, but uh, make sure we uh, represent the papaya colour as well as well. How much focus have you had on strategy as well coming into this one after the last few races? Um, I mean, no, nothing more than usual, let's say. I think, uh, you know, 
the last few races have been uh, a bit specific and uh, yeah, specific in the, the situations we've been in. We'll see what the weather does today, but we've also made some really good strategic decisions in the last few races. You know, the strategy we had in Barcelona was very good. Um, you know, still opportunities that we we missed out on, let's say. But uh, we've had we've had our our good days. Just nobody picks up on those as much. So uh, I think we're confident. We we know exactly what we need to do. Um, you know, we've got the same tire choices as as Max and the Ferraris. Mercedes have got a bit of a different choice to us. So. Um, yeah, let's see what we can do. Great stuff. Best of luck. Thank you, Oscar. Oscar Piastri with Laura Winter there. Mark, I mean, based off of those comments and the tone from Piastri there, it doesn't sound like we're going to really get sort of teammates colliding, feisty fireworks. It sounds like they're, with well, Piastri's side, very much willing and, and happy to play the team game. Well, they all seem very sensible, mm. don't they? I mean, we'll see what happens. Once that visor goes down and, and the sort of red mist descends, it can all change, despite what you might have said a few minutes earlier. Uh, just to pick up on something you said, he's talking about uh, McLaren and, and Verstappen in the Red Bull sort of offsetting the way they prepared over the course of the weekend he's really talking about there's a little bit of an unknown in that when McLaren tried the hard tyre that was on the Friday in the much higher temperatures when Red Bull and Max Verstappen tried the hard tyre that was that was on the Saturday morning where the conditions were a little bit different so when we talk about race pace we're now in much higher temperatures again a little bit more like Friday there's a slight unknown that no one quite knows just how quick Max Verstappen in that Red Bull is going to be in these longer runs on that harder tyre which by all accounts the hard tyre in these temperatures is going to be the favoured tyre for a large part of today's race. Yeah, we are expecting it to be a two-stop strategy, so we'll see how that unfolds. Um, Andrew, Max Verstappen starts in third. He was very frustrated after yesterday's qualifying. Of course, Red Bull have brought a big upgrade here this weekend. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on where Verstappen and Red Bull stand heading into this race? Well, Verstappen was very clear, Harry, wasn't he? He basically just said uh, the upgrade did uh, what we thought it would do, but was still not quickest. So that gives you an insight into his mindset. And he said later on in the news conference with the written media that um, he is, hasn't he got a right to be upset? Um, we need more from the car. Um, so that doesn't mean he can't win this race, of course. It's uh, McLaren believe that Red Bull and them are pretty much matched for pace, or at least that's their expectation. Um, so I'm expecting between those two teams a really close fight. Um, obviously, uh, the worry for McLaren, even off the line, is that uh, Piastri's on the inside line. And traditionally in Hungary, the inside line is not the best place to start. Uh, it's got much less grip than the outside line where uh, Norris and Verstappen start, of course. Um, they've got, just on the tyre thing, um, they've got two sets of mediums, Red Bull and McLaren, and one set of hard. So they will be racing on the mediums primarily and, the, and not the hard and Mercedes are the other way around. They've got two sets of hard and one set of medium. OK, thank you, Andrew, for that. Indeed, Verstappen starts third on that clean side of the grid. Uh, let's hear from him. Yeah, yes, it was maybe not ideal, but hopefully the car comes a bit more alive in the race. That's what we're hoping for. Um, so, yeah, I'm just hoping for a good, stable balance that we can um, yeah, try to follow the McLarens today. Uh, I, I still think, of course, they are going to be very, very fast. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. I mean, there's a lot of races left and we uh, just keep on uh, pushing, you know, try to, to be better. Data suggests on long run pace, certainly you are quicker than the McLarens. How will you look to open the doors to optimize that today? We must be looking at different data then. But uh, yeah, for me, um, I think the, the long runs are okay. But um, I think when it really matters and you have to push um, the last few races, we have been lacking a little bit. And I just hope that we made the right uh, the right calls in, um, in terms of setup for, for today that we um, yeah, have a good race car. It's going to be important as well to get the right calls strategically at the right time as well, isn't it, here? Yeah. And Red Bull is so good at doing that. Yeah, we've been good at that lately. Um, yeah, it's always uh, very heavy on, on tyres. You never know what, what can happen throughout the race, so we'll, we'll keep that, into, uh, keep that in, in mind and uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll uh, find out soon <laughs> how quick we are. We will indeed. Laura Winter asking the questions to third place man Max Verstappen ahead of the Hungarian Grand Prix. A little frustrated then for Verstappen, but I'll tell you who'll be more frustrated, Mark, is his teammate Sergio Perez amidst all the increased scrutiny on his career at Red Bull. He crashed out in the first part of qualifying yesterday. 
the literally the very last thing that he needed to happen. He needed a strong weekend, and, it, and the weekend actually started well for Sergio Perez. His Friday was actually really strong. He was actually quicker in the timesheets, at least, than Verstappen, albeit that that might not be completely representative. But he had a good day, his best Friday for some time, and it was shaping up to be a good weekend until the pressure was really on in that first part of qualifying. Big, big crash where he hit the wall. And, of course, you know, he starts all the way back in 16th. So he's going to really struggle on a circuit that's not the easiest to overtake you can overtake it but it's not easy uh, he's going to struggle to make a, a major impact and that's what he needed to do he needed to make an impact to highlight to the, the powers that be at red bull that he deserves that seat and he deserves to stay in it doesn't help him that both rb drivers ricardo and Sonoda, are inside the top 10. Uh, starting behind perez will be george russell who really was the big name the big surprise name to fall out in that first part in qualifying for mercedes uh, yes, uh, you know, Mercedes have won the last two Grand Prix, haven't they? They've, they've had a recent turn of form. They've been developing their car in a new way, which has unlocked potential. Uh, it bodes well for the rest of this season. But this weekend, I guess the temperatures being as high as they are don't suit the Mercedes so well. But that was, really wasn't the story. It was Verstappen getting a, a, a few things wrong on his first flying lap in qualifying. And then the team under fueling him, meaning he wasn't able to be on the circuit as it dry, went from wet to dry and therefore became quickest at the right moment. So a combination of is, I think, between driver and team yesterday. Blue skies over this hungaring, puffy white clouds and seemingly some more smiles around the uh, McLaren car. Fist bumps all around from Lando, Mor Lando Norris to his engineers. It seems on the face of it that uh, they have managed to fix the uh, throttle issue on that car that Norris has experienced in the uh, reconnaissance lap to the grid. So uh, a breathe a sigh of relief for McLaren and Lando Norris. And um, on the other side of of, uh, well, uh, things that we haven't really been speaking about at all. It's the two Ferraris. Carlos Sainz in for Charles Leclerc in sixth. Been a bit anonymous all weekend long. What can they do this afternoon? Um, it's going to be difficult, to be honest with you, because if you take the top four teams, that's McLaren, Red Bull, uh, Mercedes and Ferrari, they're not the quickest. They're certainly not in the top two. They're probably in a fight with Mercedes, is the truth of it. So fourth and sixth is about where they are right now. They've had a different form recently. They need to develop their way out of this because some of their recent upgrades just haven't worked in the way they expected. And that means that because gaps are so small, particularly this weekend, a, a tenth here or there can drop you from the top two or three all the way down to sort of seventh, eighth, ninth. OK, well, we're just a few moments away then from getting this Grand Prix started. Lando Norris looking for a win that he feels might have evaded him over the last few rounds. Oscar Piastri searching for his first Grand Prix victory and Max Verstappen trying to leapfrog both of them, starting from third place. 70 laps ahead of us. It's time for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Lando Norris starts on pole position for McLaren in a McLaren front row lockout. Piastri is alongside him. Max Verstappen in third, ahead of Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari fourth. Lewis Hamilton for Mercedes rounds out the top five, ahead of Charles Leclerc in sixth. Fernando Alonso is seventh, ahead of his teammate. And Aston Martin driver Lance Stroll is eighth. And it's the two RB drivers of Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda who round out the top ten. Nico Hülkenberg just missed out yesterday. He goes from 11th in the Haas, ahead of Valtteri Bottas in the Sauber. Alex Albon and Logan Sargent, the two Williams drivers, go from 13th and 14th ahead of Kevin Magnussen in the other Haas, who rounds out the top 15. A crash in qualifying yesterday sees Sergio Perez start 16th ahead of the big name to fall. George Russell from 17th in the Mercedes. Joe Guanyu is 18th. Esteban Ocon is 19th for Alpine. And his teammate Pierre Gasly will go from the pit lane. Formation lap then well and truly underway as they make their way to the grid. Indeed, Lando Norris already making his way down towards uh, the right-hander of turn 12. And uh, it's been quite a quick lap and there's a bit of a gap mark between uh, the two McLaren drivers. It does now start to Constantino up. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. They've still got half a lap or so to go. They're all doing their own thing here. They are uh, sort of mandated not to create too big a gap. The cars behind do have to stay within a certain number of cars uh, lengths behind the one in front, just so they don't space out too much. But temperatures are very, very high. So Lando doesn't want to end up at the start of this grid, waiting a long time for everyone else to catch up because things will get hot. So Pierre Gasly will be on from the pit lane after, well, qualifying last yesterday. Uh, Alpine electing to add a new batch to his pool of powertrain components. So nothing to lose for the Alpine driver. He starts from the pit lane. So only 19 cars on the grid with Esteban Ocon being the final one to line up. Absolutely packed out grandstands at this Hungaroring. It is a bit of a fan favorite, quite easy to get to uh, within Europe. And on that start finish line amidst the heat haze, as the sun does shine down, Lando Norris lines up on pole position. Alongside him will be Oscar Piastri. What are the final thoughts, Mark, of the drivers as they head towards the start line? Well, they're positioning themselves, they're thinking about, they're visualising this launch off the line. Getting that right is crucial. It's a long run down to turn one. I'm expecting fireworks in the first couple of corners here. 70 laps ahead of us for round 13 of the Formula One season here at the Hungaroring. 14 turns, six to the left and eight to the right with Esteban Ocon lining up last on the grid. His teammate Pierre Gasly will go from the pit lane. Oscar Piastri starts in second. Lando Norris is on pole position. It's all eyes to the lights and foot to the floor as we go racing in Hungary. And it's a good start from Lando Norris. And he has to push Piastri all the way to the wall to try and cover his teammate off. Verstappen trying to swoop round the inside, the outside. Verstappen round the outside. It's three wide. Piastri has the inside line. Piastri takes the lead of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Verstappen runs off the track, back on, Norris is down to four as Hamilton swings round the outside and battles with Verstappen, Piastri leads Verstappen, leads Lewis Hamilton who just gets overtaken again running towards turn four now, Norris back up into third. Wow, it's the dream start for Piastri, it's a nightmare for Lando Norris, there'll be question marks as to whether Max Verstappen actually gained an advantage and overtook Norris whilst going off the circuit but a little bit of leeway normally given on these first corner incidents, it was chaos going in there. Max has to give the position. We're on it. Straight onto the radio then was Lando Norris. Verstappen forced out wide on the exit of turn one. Cut back on. Norris falling back. Hamilton with a really good start as well. Up into fourth as we head down to the 90 degree right hander of turn 12. Oscar Piastri starting on the dirty side of the grid. Really had to hold firm in that position going into turn one because Norris was really trying to defend it. Three wide going through turn one. And at the end of lap one, it's Oscar Piastri who currently heads the field. Ahead of Verstappen, then comes Norris, Hamilton is fourth, Leclerc rounds out the top five with a brilliant start from Fernando Alonso, who's now in sixth ahead of Sainz, Stroll, Albon and Magnussen with an equally brilliant start, K-Mags up five places into the top ten in his Haas. Yeah, he committed to the outside, so he, he was run off, can't do that. That was Norris. Yeah, he committed to the outside, so he knew he would run off as the DRS is enabled, the Jag reduction system. Talk about good starts. Well, it's not the case for Sergio Perez, who is down to 18th, having started this race in 16th. He just tried to overtake Logan uh, Sargent, but Sargent's still holding on to 17th place in front of him. All 20 drivers still running in this race. Yeah, uh, disastrous, I guess, from Perez. Just continues to be so. Alex Albon up in P9. That's a great start from him in the Williams. Carlos Sainz dropped back a couple of places. The two Ferraris having switched effectively. Leclerc now up in P5. But at the beginning, it was it was the three wide going into turn one. It was Max Verstappen who did commit to going on the outside, tried to go round. It did inevitably mean he was going to get shoved out wide. I got forced off. I was ahead of the apex and he just opened the wheel. I got forced off. Understood, Max. <laughs> There's his version of events. Um, he was forced off to some extent, but it was almost inevitable being three wide going through a corner like that. There's going to be, you know, arguments from both sides. The FIA have noted it. Race control have noted it. So it may well be investigated as well. We'll keep an eye on it. 
everybody out there on the medium tyre, with the exception of Alonso, Stroll, Albon and Magnussen on the soft tyre. That explains their brilliant starts. Down the inside, though, into turn one. And it is the Ferrari battling with the Aston Martin. Carlos Sainz trying to make his way through on the Spaniard, on the Spaniard compatriot. It's Sainz who makes his way through up into sixth. Alonso now down to seventh. Those soft tyres that those drivers have chosen to run with from the start of the race. Well, they may well have provided them with grip at the start, but they will dead quickly. We fourth race control, by the regulation, they should give the position back or face a more severe penalty. Yeah, he was only ahead because he breaks way too deep. He committed to the exit. Well, Norris giving a very calm and collected response to that one. It's as if they've memorised the regulations, uh, and they probably have. Uh, and uh, Norris is, though, a couple of seconds now back from Max Verstappen, who is holding firm in that second place position. It's lap three of 70. Piastri leads Verstappen by one and a half seconds. Then it's Norris, another few seconds behind. Hamilton, Leclerc in fifth. Sainz has just got through and Alonso for sixth. And Alonso now has to look in his mirrors because his teammate Lance Stroll is coming at him for seventh place. Albon and Magnussen round out the top ten. The two RB drivers dropping out of the points, now on 11th and 12th. Max, the incident is under investigation. Uh, I think our recommendation is you let this go. We can talk about it later. So if you let Lando past, uh, down to turn one. Oh, why can't they not just say what they think? And then we decide that... Well, we can tell you that Verstappen has just let Lando Norris through down towards turn two. So that escapes any other severe penalty and uh, the, the mission will be dropped now. But Verstappen has to look at the rear wing of the McLaren ahead of him. It's interesting, isn't it, what Verstappen says there? Why couldn't the FIA tell them they think he's breached the rules, so give the place back? But what they've done is left it open. So we're going to investigate it. We'll have a look at it. We may, You may have breached the rules or you may not. But then it's down to Verstappen now, and, and as they've duly done, they have to give the, the place back. It may have not been a penalty, so um, who knows? But look, it now puts the two McLarens back in prime position. This is where they wanted to be after the first couple of laps. Here's Verstappen again. OK, so you can just drive people off the track then. Then uh, you can tell the FIA that's how we're going to race from now onwards. Just drive people off the road. It's, a, it's an interesting... Uh, do you know what? I've got some sympathy for Max. I think it was a, a sort of almost a, one of those racing incidents into the that first one, corner. Turn one. I, I would say so. It, it was just three cars just don't go through there, but I wouldn't say that any one of those three cars necessarily did anything wrong. That's just a consequence of having everybody bundling into the first corner. So I can understand why Max is upset, but I can also understand why Norris is upset. The, the situation is, though, we've got two McLarens now leading the race, and this is what they wanted because from here, they have the ability to be able to control this race. As long as Norris can hold Max Verstappen back, and he will have DRS, of course, that's a very powerful DRS in the Red Bull, but if McLaren can hold the Red Bull back, they can use one car, they probably thought it might be the other way around, but they can use one car to let the other car build a gap. Well, now that uh, Norris has been unleashed from behind Verstappen, he did just set the fastest lap, but Verstappen is absolutely still coming for him. We're just getting a look at the race restart as well, and, and Norris really did almost get caught up in, in having to defend from Piastri, who just dived down the inside and had it all, and then three wide through turn one, Norris had his teammate to his right, the Red Bull to his left. I'm going to say I don't think Max did anything wrong there. I think La uh, Piastri on the inside ran a little bit wide. That meant that Nando Norris had to react and take a tiny little jink to the left. Then Max Verstappen had to do the same. I don't think Max was out of control. He didn't outbreak himself. I actually think that it was just one of those racing incidents. So I think Max can feel hard done by that. Well, an angry Max Verstappen is not somebody you want to mess with. And Verstappen and Norris, of course, friends off the track. But that is being tested to the limit so far in the last few races. It's only a couple of weekends ago they collided in Austria, battling for the win. At the moment, they're all playing fair. Norris still ahead of Verstappen. And Piastri uh, with a 2.3 second gap out in front. So uh, Piastri had the inside line going into Turn 1. Did he inadvertently cause Yes, that. I was just going to say, we've just seen an onboard from Piastri's car. It was actually him that, that didn't make the apex. He went in a little bit too quickly. He ran wide. Then his teammate had to, you know, if there was no Max Verstappen there, if there was, a, if there was Max Verstappen on the outside of Piastri, Verstappen's going to be upset. So, yeah, I can see, I think if anyone was to blame for that sort of chain of events, it was probably the other McLaren. But um, for me, just a racing incident. But anyway, that is by the by. We've now got the order, which is Piastri, then Norris, and then Verstappen. 
but for how long? Lap six of 70 indeed, that's the top three. Hamilton is fourth ahead of the two Ferraris of Leclerc and Sainz. Alonso seventh ahead of Stroll. Albon and Magnussen are the point scorers. Ricardo and Sonoda 11th and 12th ahead of Bottas who is 13th. Ocon with a decent start up to 14th. Russell has only made a couple of positions up to 15th. Sargent in 16th. Perez still behind the Williams driver in 17th. Joe Guanyu is 18th and Pierre Gasly having started from the pit lane up to 19th. Nico Hulkenberg is 20th and last but that's because he's coming to the pits uh, last time around and pitted to go onto the hard tyre. Indeed, Hulkenberg, Gasly, Perez and Russell all elected to go on the hard tyre at the start of this race. So running slightly longer and those on the soft tyre now running out of tyre life as they come into the pits led by Alex Albon. Then comes Kevin Magnussen who has to really stamp on the brakes in that house. Lock up to get down to the pit lane speed limit. The soft tyre, great to give you an advantage off the start but it runs out quickly. Yeah, very, very quickly. They were all of these runners here that we're seeing now piling to the pits were actually holding up a gaggle of cars behind them as the pace just disappeared. The only one really to make major use of that was, in fact, Albon, who got a great start with his soft tyre clad Williams and got himself up inside the top 10. But of course, now with this early pit stop, he's dropped all the way back down to 18th. So a lot of work to do for him. Yeah, Albon, Magnussen, Ocon all coming into the pits last time around. So they filter to the back of the pack. That promotes the two RB drivers back up into the top 10. Ricardo now ninth. Sonoda rounding out the final point scoring position in 10th. Lap 7 of 70. Oscar Piastri leads the race for McLaren having started second. Two and a half seconds is the gap between himself and teammate Lando Norris after a rough lap 1 recovering to P2 for the time being. Verstappen who was looking that he was still piling on the pressure to Norris ahead having given him the position now one and a half seconds behind and outside crucially of that DRS detection point Hamilton is another 1.2 seconds behind him in fourth also out of that DRS detection point yeah and it is crucial particularly for for the likes of Verstappen because DRS is powerful around here there are two zones there's one detection point which is just coming into the final corner but then you get two separate activation zones one down the the main straight past the pits and you go through turn one and you then get it again from that same detection point so getting it once is is it gives you two boosts, two hits of it, and it's really powerful. On the Red Bull, we know that DRS works a little bit more powerfully on that car than it does on some others, particularly on a high downforce configuration, which is what we've got here. So if he can get back within that one second of Lando Norris, and at the moment he's struggling to do that, but if he can, that's an opportunity for him. Pit stops galore happening now. Ricardo, Joe has just come into the pits, and Ricardo feeding out right next to Kevin Magnussen through turn three. Magnussen with the outside line. That becomes the inside on the way towards turn four. Lovely move from K-Mac, who pitted a lap earlier to get rid of his soft tyre. Brilliant stuff from the Danish driver, who is now departing the Haas team at the end of the year. It may be over 17th and 18th for the time being, but that could well come in handy in terms of maybe the finer points paying positions towards the end of this Grand Prix. Yeah, and so all the guys that have now made their pit stops, so the guys that were on the soft tyres and have now switched to the hard tyre, together with those few that started the race on it, is really good information for the guys at the front end who are all on the medium tyre, but who will look to switch to the hard tyre at their first stop. And now going to get a bit of an indication as to how that tyre holds up, because there's so many people going on to it much earlier on. So there'll be a lot of eyeballs from the front end of the grid looking towards the back end of the grid to, to keep an eye on lap times. Stroll is still clinging on to his soft tyres. He stayed out in seventh and this is the sound of George Russell who you can hear now making his way through turn one he's the first of the hard tyre runners who started on that harder compound tyre he's worked his way now up to 10th thanks to those who have pitted ahead of him Sargent's just pitted as well in the Williams and come out down in 19th spot ahead of Joe Guan Yu 20 drivers still in this one Piastri leads Norris two and a half seconds the gap Verstappen is third Hamilton Leclerc signs strong and Sonoda, the top eight, all yet to pit. Then comes Valtteri Bottas in ninth, who also hasn't pitted, and George Russell rounds out the top ten. Nice battle brewing, actually, between Bottas and Russell. Yeah, and then right behind them is now Sergio Perez, with everybody else stopping. It's Perez, who is on the hard tyre, having started on it. He's right up behind Russell now, just outside the top ten, but he's putting in some pretty quick lap time. So a little bit of clear air now for those hard tyre runners who began the race with that tyre to now start to really extend the, the stint. This tyre will 
maybe not be as quick as the medium in the early phases, but will last a lot longer. So they're going to be on a different type of strategy. We would expect the guys who started on the medium tyre, that's pretty much all of the front runners, certainly down to P8. We would expect them to start thinking about stopping towards around lap 17, 18, 19, maybe a little bit earlier if the temperatures do creep up. And again, based on what we're seeing from the hard tyre runners now, that would be the optimum strategy. Well, they'll come in highly likely they'll put on a set of hard tyres, do that, mid, that middle stint on the hard tyre, and then it'll be a final stint for those that have got fresh mediums, and that's the Red Bulls and the McLaren, final stint on mediums. Some of the others, maybe the Mercedes, a final stint on hards. About to be Bottas in the Sauber. I tell you what, he's holding his own in ninth at the moment. Last lap around, nip and tuck between himself and George Russell behind. Bottas on the quicker medium tyre, but that's starting to deg now a little bit more than Russell's hard tyre. But the driver that's quicker than them both is the one that is closing on them rapidly behind. And that is Sergio Perez in the Red Bull, recovering from a crash in qualifying that saw him start 16th for this race. Thanks to others pitting, he's now worked his way up into 11th and is closing on this battle for 9th, 10th and 11th that currently is held by Bottas, Russell and then Perez. Lance Stroll is doing an amazing job of keeping the soft tyre alive and actually over the last lap he's just lost another two tenths of lap time in this final lap but up until then he's just lost another two tenths beyond that so now he's hit the, the, the wall I guess come off the end of the cliff for those soft tyres but up until now still doing lap times that are pretty much comparable with the, the lead runners on the medium tyre so expect Lance Stroll into the pits very very soon he's done a good job so far. I'll tell you what though, he stayed out for another lap because I think the problem Aston Martin might have is there's not really a, a decent enough Enough gap to, to drop him in and if they do pit him he's gonna go all the way plummet right to the back of the field because uh, there's a pretty decent gap between Sainz and Stroll but Sainz is ahead of Stroll so that's not going to work for him Sonoda is keeping within Stroll at the moment in eighth but yeah. Sonoda's on the medium tyre so that's still lasting a bit so Stroll hanging on here but Sonoda's still two and a half seconds behind the Canadian yeah you're right but but actually over over two laps he's now losing half a second a lap to to what he was doing on that soft tyre and certainly what he is doing to the, the people around him so if he has to stay out much longer that great work that he's done over the first stint the first few laps will start to deteriorate they'll lose ground so they, were, they are in a tricky spot you're right the gaps are just not there for them with everybody pitting behind Piastri leads on lap 11 uh, lap 12 as he crosses the line I should say of 70 three seconds the gap between the Australian and his teammate Lando Norris then comes Max Verstappen in third Lewis Hamilton is fourth the two Ferraris are fifth and sixth Leclerc ahead of Sainz Lance Stroll still on those soft tyres in seventh ahead of Sonoda Bottas still ahead of Russell rounding out the top 10 then it's Perez Gasly Hulkenberg who has pitted so too has Alonso Albon is 15th Magnussen is 16th Ricardo Ocon Sargent and Joe all of those runners have pitted and make up the 20 drivers all still running in this race Nico Hulkenberg pitted before anybody else has worked his way up into 13th he pitted quite early onto the hard tyre he has the fastest lap at the moment uh, and is uh, finding himself closing in on Pierre Gasly as he comes through turn one so interesting strategy call from the Haas team there to uh, see if they can challenge uh, their closest rivals which uh, this weekend are indeed RB and Alpine over sixth in the Constructors' Championship. So at the moment, we're, we're still seeing the medium tyre on the top 10 being faster. The top 10, uh, all apart from Lance Stroll, of course, who's still on that soft. Still, still hanging on, by the way, on that soft tyre. Uh, the top 10 in the medium tyre, still doing generally faster times. The hard tyre at this point is not quite as quick, it seems. We didn't get the temperatures that we perhaps thought we might get. People were talking about track temperatures well up into the 50 degrees. We're not at that point. We're 43 and a half degrees right now. It's still hot, but it's definitely not extreme hot. When it gets extreme hot, that's when you're really going to see the hard tyre be a favoured tyre because it's just simply too hot for the medium. So at the moment, the medium looking like a, a decent tyre. And don't forget, the McLarens and the Red Bull of Verstappen have two sets of those for this Grand Prix. Oscar Piastri still leading this race. The gap just under three and a half seconds. Piastri, who has indeed won a sprint race, but never a Grand Prix. He's been knocking on the door, not perhaps as hard as his teammate has been, but certainly Piastri has been in the mix after a bit of an underwhelming start to his second season as a Formula One driver. But so far, he has done all he can to keep 
hold of this race. It's still early stages. We're not yet at the 25% distance mark. And Piastri, I suppose if there's a fault within the Australian that's been brought to people's attention, it's sometimes his tyre management skills aren't always as good as his teammates. No, but he's got a, a rare opportunity here to be able to make use of the clear track. You know, you're always finding it much harder to look after tyres when you're in a fight, when you're in a battle with those around you, which more often than not, that's where he's been a little bit further in the pack that's when it becomes harder to look after tyre as opposed to his teammate who's often been up front with Max Verstappen. Just looking behind the two uh, McLarens, we've got Max Verstappen who's now nearly three seconds behind Lando Norris, but actually he's got to look over his shoulder because Lewis Hamilton is not just hanging on to the Red Bull, he's actually closing him down and he's very, very close now to dipping inside that DRS zone just behind Max Verstappen. There could be a threat where Hamilton actually takes an opportunity at Max Verstappen and the, not the battle that, for the front that we thought might come with Verstappen chasing the McLarens, but actually the Mercedes chasing the Red Bull. And Lando, we believe our race is with Verstappen. Continue to open a gap, this is good. It's now 2.9. Well, that was interesting. That was Lando Norris's radio being told that he thinks, well, their race is more with Max Verstappen behind him. Oscar Piastri clear up the road, almost four seconds the gap. So McLaren then feeling that Piastri actually has this in hand at the moment. But this battle is uh, heating up between Verstappen and Hamilton. But last lap around, I mean, they're nip and tuck actually on last lap times, both in the 124.7s. Uh, was one Red Bull and one Mercedes battling over third and fourth. There's the other Mercedes and the other Red Bull battling over 10th and 11th. That's Russell, who was ahead of the sound you're hearing, Sergio Perez, doing his best to try and recover not only from a tough qualifying and a crash but to recover perhaps a formula one career in the doldrums and try and get some decent points out of these 70 laps of running around the hungara ring but right now it's kind of playing a waiting game i feel like we're in tire saving mode a little bit as well now the moment lance is about a second behind us if he pits and sonoda is about three and a half behind us yeah i don't want to know man i know we lost the race with everybody. <laughs> Fernando Alonso reporting back from his 14th place at the moment as his teammate finally comes into the pits. That was a mammoth stint from Lance Stroll on a soft tyre. 14 laps and into the pits he comes and it's a decent stop. For, no, it's not. It's 4.1 seconds. Uh, and uh, he moves on from the soft tyre. I imagine he's put on the medium he was on the medium um, because they don't have any hearts do they yeah. at Aston Martin but he has come out right into a gaggle of cars and this was the problem you were highlighting earlier on he ended up losing so much time in the last few laps of that as those tyres just went away that he's, he had no gap to drop into but he simply had to pit and he's now found himself right in the mix um, he's going to find it a struggle there he's got to get those tyres up to temperature but he's in amongst Daniel Ricciardo Kevin Magnussen he's going to have those people breathing down his neck very very quickly yeah, and uh, really going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Daniel Ricciardo through the left-hander of turn two, then the right-hand kink of turn three, up through the blind left-hander of four, and uh, Ricciardo loses out on that b battle with Lance Stroll. Uh, Stroll has come out on that medium tyre, surrounded by hard tyre runners, Magnussen ahead of him, Ricciardo behind, um, and this is at the moment is for 15th, 16th, and 17th. I, I just want to come back to that radio message Lando, we believe our race is with Verstappen. I, I wonder if all is okay with that car. But actually, no, the last lap was fine. It was only a tenth between them because he did drop almost half uh, a second to his teammate at one stage, did Norris, and, uh, did Norris to Piastri. So he did have some throttle issues ahead of the Grand Prix. They seem to have been cleared by the team and happy days. But uh, now maybe he just had a bit of a, a mistake on one of his laps because the last lap around, Piastri was a 124.2 and Norris was a 124.3. Yeah, so it looks like he's comfortable and under control. And crucially, he's got control over Matt. Verstappen so he's, he's built that gap it's now over three and a half seconds back to Verstappen we thought Verstappen could well come alive in the race and pose a major threat but actually now McLaren's at this point at least have this race to some extent under control with two cars in front that they can now use that radio message you're referring to about 
Norris's race being with Verstappen, Norris will not like that because he we've heard him recently talk about let's not think about what's behind, let's look at let's look up the road, let's go for the win. It doesn't matter that his teammate is there to him, he just wants to win this Grand Prix. He's still sort of got visions of a championship at stake here. So Norris, I think, will, will not want to hear that his race is with the guys behind him. So Stroll's just got through a Magnussen by the way, but into the pits comes Lewis Hamilton. Now he was about a second behind Max Verstappen, and I wonder, Mark, is this Mercedes trying the undercut here? We know it's powerful, and Hamilton wasn't able to get close enough to try and make a move on the track. So Mercedes have called him into the pits, 2.3 seconds, and he's back out again. He'll feed out just behind Yuki Tsunoda and ahead of his teammate, George Russell. That's nice work from Mercedes. That's exactly what they're doing there, trying the undercut. It is powerful because there's so uh, much degradation with the tyres around here, particularly the rear tyres, and those rear tyres are the ones you need to get traction out of the slower corners here. Therefore, when you put a new set on and Lewis Hamilton just switched on to a brand new set of the hard tyres, he's able to make those use at work for him. 100% pace, please, 100% pace. Norris being told 100% pace. Yeah, so hard tyres then for Hamilton so he can go much longer into this race. Let's see if Red Bull of Verstappen reacts because they know how powerful the undercut is here as Norris is told to come into the pit. He's got four seconds over Verstappen, but he's behind his teammate by almost three and a half seconds. Yeah, so, so Norris has to pit now because he wants to protect from the undercut from Verstappen, but also they can be slightly wary of the fact that Lewis Hamilton has just made that pit stop. Although there's a reasonable gap, three and a half seconds, that's not unachievable. That might, It might bring Lewis Hamilton back into play against the McLaren if they didn't do this. So Norris into the pits, medium tyres off brand, uh, a used or scrubbed set of hard tyres and it wasn't the fastest pit stop 2.8 seconds back out onto the road those tyres are not brand new but I think they've only had a bit of a scrubbing in so relatively new slightly slow on the front left for Lando Norris but he does come out crucially ahead of Yuki Tsunoda who is just about to get overtaken by Lewis Hamilton who Breaks late down the inside of the RB driver who doesn't fight it. Hamilton up into sixth. Norris feeds out in fifth. So that was a good call from McLaren. They needed to do that because another lap around and Hamilton would have been able to potentially uh, take a position away from Lando Norris as well. And, and I suppose Red Bull and Verstappen are now left in a position here where they have to stay out now for a, a, as long as they can possibly manage. Well, they either had to respond immediately, which they haven't done, or are they? I can't break, I can't end the corners. What the end is just with about. Copy that, Max. <laughs> Apart from that, Max, how is it? <laughs> uh, not a happy man, is he? Um, and he gets frustrated like this, doesn't he, Verstappen? When things aren't going his way, you do hear that frustration on the radio. But he's now, you're right, Harry, he's in this position now where he, he kind of has to st stay out. Piastri now pits from the lead, which means Verstappen takes the lead of the race. He's got clear track in front of him, but he's also on a set of tyres that have lost the best part of their life. If Verstappen were to pit now, he would have been overtaken by Lewis Hamilton. So Red Bull haven't responded to McLaren's pit stop. McLaren have responded themselves with Oscar Piastri. Verstappen takes the lead. Leclerc and Sainz move up into second and third. Piastri feeds out nicely behind Carlos Sainz in fourth position with his teammate making his way through turn one now into fifth because normally what you'd see mark in a race is the lead car would have priority over pitting first but on this occasion that went to lando norris the second driver yeah they had to because they had to respond to, to the mercedes but also the two mclarens had built enough of a gap between them that they could afford to do that and still keep the status quo so piastri's still ahead of norris they have got the two ferraris and verstappen ahead of them but of course they're still on their slightly old now and slightly degraded medium tyres at the start of the race on 19 laps ago. Pirelli talked about this being the time when you had to start getting rid of those medium tyres. Verstappen now and the Ferraris. Ferraris I think we can take out of the picture a little bit to some extent because they're not really in the same race as the likes of McLaren but Verstappen I think has missed an opportunity to go for the undercut first of all and control this series of pit stops and now they're a little bit in no man's land with only one car in that fight. Well lap 19 of 17 Max Verstappen leads having yet to pit three and a half seconds between himself and the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc also yet to pit signs third yet to pit then comes Oscar Piastri effectively the net leader if it all plays out as we expect it to then it's Norris in fifth Hamilton sixth Sonoda seventh ahead of Russell Perez still not really challenging now Russell he's fallen behind a bit in that fight over eighth and ninth Gasly started from the pit lane yet to pit rounds out the top ten then it's Hulkenberg in 11th ahead of the two Aston Martins Alonso ahead of Stroll 12th and 13th Albon is 14th with Magnussen round
rounding out the top 15. Ricardo has fallen down to 16th. He has stopped though. So too is Bottas behind, Ocon 18th, Sergeant 19th, and Joe 20th and last in the Salva. And the temperature's creeping up. We've gone up about a degree since the beginning of the race, almost. Uh, 29 and a half degrees always now. Track temperature nearly 45 degrees. The hard tyre is working well. Matt, uh, Lewis Hamilton just set fastest lap of the race with that fresh hard tyre. He's got another set of those. Mercedes with a slightly different strategy in terms of the tyres they saved for the Grand Prix. Mercedes with two sets of the hard tyre. The McLarens and the Red Bulls with two sets of the medium. If it turns out that the hard tyre is working better, and that's exactly what we're about to find out here it could be that actually mercedes particularly with hamilton of course could well be in this fight when we thought they might not be we just saw a rather glum look from uh, hannah schmidt the chief strategist at red bull <laughs> well there you go there's the answer to that question and that was hamilton talking about the hard tire he does have the fastest lap though as it Which currently he's just stands set on yeah that tire. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 123 201 uh, that hamilton has done but stafford can then continue Continuing to stay out as he makes his way down towards uh, the left-hander uh, of turn two. But he's not happy in that Red Bull, not feeling confident. Leclerc and Sainz aren't too far behind either, but Ferrari haven't really felt like they've come to play too much this weekend. Then comes Piastri and Norris, the top five. The sound you're hearing is Fernando Alonso making his way round the final corner. He's chasing the Haas of Nico Hülkenberg. Alonso pitted fairly early. Here's Leclerc on the radio. Copy. So Leclerc is asking the team to think about plan C. Now, three stop or one stop? The, the two obvious plans, uh, and bear in mind all of this changes depending on what's happening around you, but the two obvious plans are a medium tyre start and then either two stints on the hard tyre or a hard tyre stint and then a medium tyre. That's the most obvious way to approach this race as Verstappen is now called into the pit. But there is an outside chance of a three-stop race. It didn't look like the quickest way to approach this. And five or six seconds slower in the simulations, but it could be an opportunity for the likes of Ferrari to do something different. Ferrari are also coming out into the pit lane, though, for Carlos Sainz, who is told to box. Verstappen reaches his pit box first, and it's a little bit delayed to get away from Max Verstappen. Three seconds, the stop for the Dutchman. Leclerc goes through to take the lead of this race. Piastri up into second, Norris third. Hamilton makes his way through. Sainz comes into the pits, half a second quicker than the uh, Red Bull in terms of pit stops so Verstappen feeds out behind Lewis Hamilton that is a net gain then for Lewis Hamilton up in fifth Verstappen losing positions down in fifth he comes out just ahead of Yuki Tsunoda then it's Russell in seventh Perez in eighth and Sainz uh, who now feeds out into ninth it was actually a bit of a really poor start for Carlos Sainz who started this race in fourth didn't get off the line very well uh, and now having just pitted feeds out in ninth ahead of Pierre Gasly so Charles Leclerc still on the medium tyre. He's just sort of talked about this, shall we opt for a, a plan C? And if we speculate to suggest that could be a three-stop, that means running quite a bit longer on this first stint on the medium tyre. His last lap time was a 24.5, which actually is way more competitive than I'd have thought it would be at this stage. He's in the realms of the cars around him. Yes, the guys with brand new hard tyres are going a little bit quicker, but it's not an embarrassing lap time. And if he can extend this by, it'd have to be another sort of 10 laps, really, five to 10 laps to really give him a chance to, to get to the end on a set of hards it's not beyond the realms of possibility. I wonder if, uh, yeah, they were just managing uh, the tyres the appropriate amount in the middle of that first stint before we saw all those pit stops come in. So let's see what Leclerc and Ferrari have up their sleeve and what plan C may well turn out to be if they go down that route. Lap 23 of 70 of the Hungarian Grand Prix. It's round 13 of 24 of the Formula One Championship and the penultimate race before we get to to the summer break and the summer shutdown in August. Charles Leclerc currently leads, having yet to pit. Here he is on the radio. Keep it up. This is really good driving. Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to have to correct myself because I think I might have said that Plan C could be a three-stop. Actually, what I meant was it could be a one-stop. 
that's the alternate strategy here. If Leclerc can extend by another five or so laps, he might be able to put a hard tyre on and see that tyre all the way to the end of this race. It is slower, as I said, in the simulations, but he's driving very well. His lap times are, are definitely in the realms of, of being sustainable at this point. He's now at the front of the field and got a clear track in front of him, so that's the best way to look after your tyres as well. That could be something that could work for them. Yeah, they're enjoying the clean air. There is not another car for almost <laughs> half a lap, but he's told to box as we say that at the end of lap 23 ferrari call him in charles leclerc then speeds into the pit lane hits the pit limiter button gets down to 80 kilometers per hour and trundles towards the ferrari pit box where his end mechanics are waiting onto the jacks the medium tires come off the hard go on 3.2 seconds the stop as piastri retakes the lead of the hungarian grand prix ahead of lando norris hamilton now up into third then comes Max Verstappen in fourth. Charles Leclerc feeds out in fifth, just ahead of Yuki Tsunoda, who is also staying out and doing a bit of a mammoth run on the medium tyre as well. And down the inside and trying to keep that position. Leclerc, as Carlos Sainz, I should say, in the other Ferrari, having pitted last lap around, working his way back up through the field. He's just picked off Sergio Perez into turn one. Yeah, good, good work from Science, but he does have to get past the likes of Perez, who's on a completely different race plan to him. He's got to find his way back up towards the front with his teammate Charles Leclerc, of course, in a, a stronger position at this point. Having gone a little bit longer, he's still two or three places, three places further up the road, both now on the hard tyre, but Leclerc on one that's slightly fresher, therefore he'll be, get, be able to go a bit longer into this stint as well. So where Science was looking like the stronger of the two Ferrari drivers for most of this weekend, it now at this point the race at least looks like Leclerc is in the prime seat of those two. Yeah, Monchard Leclerc having started sixth and now pitted, he's fit out in fifth place and Leclerc who really needs some points on the board, he hasn't scored, uh, well he's only scored 12 points in the last four races since that spectacular Monaco Grand Prix win so it's been a bit of a, a fallow run for Charles Leclerc looking to try and put that right this afternoon as we get to lap 25 of 70. Piastri retakes the lead of the Hungarian Grand Prix, three seconds between himself and teammate Lando Norris who did start on pole position, Hamilton is third, Verstappen fourth, Leclerc fifth, Sonoda is sixth ahead of Russell, Sainz, Perez and Gasly, the top ten. Really great battle. It's been going on for a couple of laps and a little twitch from Nico Hülkenberg on the exit of the final corner in the Haas. Hülkenberg is 11th on the hard tyre but Alonso is hunting him down with the aid of DRS. Closes up under braking into turn one but there's enough of a gap for Hülkenberg to hold on for the time being. That is a battle over 11th and 12th. Then comes Stroll, Albon, Magnussen, the top 15 Ricardo, Bottas, Ocon, Sargent and Joe, the 20 drivers all still in this race as Sainz just picked off another driver in the form of George Russell. He has and as we said earlier he needs to so he's now fighting his way through the field he's got past Russell just up the road is Sonoda who's sort of struggling on that original medium tyre that he started the Grand Prix on it won't take long for Sainz to get past him as well and that then puts him right up behind his teammate Leclerc so Ferrari will then have two Ferraris running line astern in this Grand Prix and decisions to make about how hard they let them fight out front though McLaren doing a sterling job because right behind them they've got Lewis Hamilton him, but he's not posing enough of a threat. McLaren have, at this point at least, the race in their control. They can dictate the pace, they can look after tyres and manage their performance because there's nobody breathing fast enough down their neck that's going to cause them any trouble. The man on the move at the moment, if anybody, is actually Max Verstappen in this slightly sort of nullified middle phase of the Grand Prix. Verstappen trying his best to try and close down on Hamilton, but he's got over four seconds to make up. He has got the fastest lap of the race, but if you're going to make any impact on this Grand Prix, and I think at the moment it look, it's looking like his best hope is a podium. He's got to hunt down and then overtake Lewis Hamilton. The sound of Fernando Alonso taking a wider line through turn one. Desperately trying to get past Nico Hülkenberg. Has a little look to the inside of turn two. Hülkenberg takes the tighter line but then runs out wide. That blocks off the outside for Alonso. Cuts back in. Both of them carrying speed and momentum through the right-hand kink of turn three. Is Alonso going to try it down the inside of four? No, you can't get two cars through there. Even if you're Fernando Alonso in one of them. He backs off last minute. Has to slot in behind. 
Hulkenberg, and they now line a stern towards the chicane. My goodness, thank God, thank God Fernando did back out of that. That could have been an aeroplane crash. The speed's there heading up the hill into turn four, which is a blind corner. It's where Charles Leclerc crashed earlier in the weekend on Friday. We saw Sonoda have a big impact just after that one as well. You can't get two through there, so I'm pleased that the experience of Fernando Alonso shone through, and he just backed off. He'll have another go at a different point on the racetrack. Right now, if it were to end like this, it would shake up the Constructors and Drivers' Championship slightly, or it would tighten it for sure. 50 points it would be uh, for, between uh, Red Bull in the uh, Constructors, and uh, the second best team would be McLaren, and then only oh, uh, seven, less than 80 points then in the Drivers' Championship between Verstappen and Norris. So Verstappen at the moment currently four and big points being bagged by the McLaren drivers as it currently stands. Alonso's down the inside into turn one on Hülkenberg. Hülkenberg has a big lock up as well to boot. That makes it easy for Alonso. And now Hülkenberg is at risk from the other Aston Martin of Lance Stroll down the inside into turn two. Hülkenberg blocks Stroll off, but Hülkenberg struggling now on these tyres. He switched very early and Stroll is trying to find a way through. Takes to the outside on the uphill run to turn four, but can't do it. Alonso tried it, failed, Stroll tried it, also failed, he has to tuck back in behind the German. Yeah, Hülkenberg, that's the sound you can hear, he's doing his best to defend against the very fast Aston Martins, but they are on a medium tyre, and the last thing a medium tyre needs in these temperatures is to be worked this hard in a tight battle, in a fight. Lance Stroll is having to scrap for that position to get past, so that's not going to work for the tyres. So Alex, we're now thinking we're going to have to go to plan B. Yeah, but I don't appreciate when you do that, and all the times it does. We're just too indecisive. Alex Albon on the radio there, not liking the switch of strategy, calling it too indecisive. He's currently down in 14th. He's uh, about two seconds behind Stroll and a second and a half up the road from Magnussen. It sounds like they, they had a plan in mind and they've now had to sort of backtrack to, to whatever their plan B is. And, and what he's talking about is, you know, this idea of, of being indecisive rather than just commit to a plan and go for it, be confident in that decision. Drivers find it very frustrating as Stroll does finally get past Hülkenberg into turn one. Drivers find it very frustrating when they've been told one plan and they drive to that plan. That means you might push the tyre or save the tyre, depending on what you've been asked to do. And then the plan gets reverted back. So you realise that all those laps you've just done at a certain pace were somewhat either wasted. Either you've used up a tyre you now need to make last or you haven't used up a tyre that you're about to get rid of and you had a lot more pace available. Lap 28 of 70, Oscar Piastri leads the Hungarian Grand Prix by almost four seconds ahead of his teammate Lando Norris. Then comes Lewis Hamilton in third, Max Verstappen struggling in his Red Bull, holding on to fourth ahead of the two Ferraris, Leclerc and Sainz. Sonoda is in seventh, still yet to pit from the medium tyre that he started on. Russell is eighth, Perez ninth, having try or trying to recover from their lowly qualifying positions. Gasly rounds out the top ten, having started from the pit lane. He hasn't pitted, but he's been dramatically caught by Fernando Alonso finally once the Spaniard was unleashed from Hülkenberg's Haas uh, as Perez now is coming into the pits for his first pit stop started down in 16th the man that is fighting for not only his Red Bull future but his career in Formula One was handed a lifeline by Red Bull a couple of years ago but is that lifeline now running out of steam he comes into the pits and drops out of the points he'll feed out all the way down what well, Magnussen's coming through so too is the Sauber of uh, Bottas so Perez goes all the way down to 15th position only one place ahead of where he started this Grand Prix yeah he's got a lot of work to do Sergio Perez he's on the medium tyre those around him are on the harder tyre generally so he will have the opportunity to overtake but of course as we just said that uses up your tyre life very very quickly at the front end it's kind of status quo between the top three Piastri Norris and then Hamilton they've all got about four seconds between them. Verstappen has made some inroads on Lewis Hamilton. This fight for the final podium position, and it's a long way to go yet, but that's what it's looking like. Verstappen now only two seconds behind Hamilton. He was almost four, but the cars that have, have come alive on the new hard tyre are the two Ferraris. Charles Leclerc now setting fastest lap after fastest lap, so that red Ferrari really working well on the much harder compound. 
Yeah, I wonder if Hamilton has, has just been pushing his tyres a little too hard. The higher temperatures not favouring the Mercedes. Last lap around for Hamilton, a 123.3. Verstappen behind, a 122.8. That gap has now come down to just over one and a half seconds between Hamilton and Verstappen. I was about to bring up Sonoda and how he is still out there from the median tyre that he started on. I was behind signs by about 10 seconds, keeping Russell behind him. Sonoda has now finally pitted but that was a mega stint from the Japanese driver who of course crashed out in a big way in the final part of qualifying at a poor time to do so when the young Red Bull drivers want to showcase why they are the ones that should be replacing Sergio Perez in that second seat at the top team but Sonoda does come into the pits and I think he is already out again and he is out and still holding on to a points paying position feeds out in 10th place yeah and we didn't really see what happened to Daniel Ricciardo his teammate of course they started uh, line of stern on the grid but it was Ricciardo that was just ahead of him on the grid one place further up Ricciardo now down in 18 having made two pit stops uh, Sonoda having just made his first is still inside the top 10 so We'll try and find out exactly what the story was with Ricardo, but uh, I haven't actually seen anything. We haven't seen anything on our screens. But, um, yeah, Ferraris, you talked about lap times there. Hamilton struggling. Verstappen now down to one and a half seconds. So Verstappen is going to close up behind Lewis Hamilton and get DRS at some point. But coming very quickly and taking at least half a second a lap, even out of Verstappen going fast, is Charles Leclerc. He's, he's setting fastest lap after fastest lap on that hard tyre. I'm intrigued as well about what Perez can do now, who has pitted onto the medium tyre. Every driver has now seen Yuki Tsunoda was able to put the mediums through 30 laps at least and still hold relative performance. Perez now in a faster car with fresher rubber. Down the inside, he's already picking off one car of Kevin Magnussen. Perez up into 11th. Magnussen tries to fight it back, but Perez gets the DRS out of turn one as well on the short run downhill towards the left-hander of two. So Perez now up into 11th. His next opportunity will be Yuki Tsunoda, and that will get Perez up into the points. But Perez really needs to make hay now and try and get his points-paying positions come the end of the Grand Prix. It's lap 32 of 70. Still a lot to happen in this Hungarian Grand Prix, but I feel like it is crunch time now for Sergio Perez to be making some moves. Yeah, and, you know, these are, albeit he doesn't want to be back there, but these are the opportunities drivers, to some extent at least, like, where they have a, a faster tyre offset and the opportunity and the necessity to go and drive and overtake. That's where you get to showcase what you can do. It's also what they enjoy doing most of all. So Perez with that chance. Uh, we're getting a close-up shot of the, uh, the right front tyre of George Russell, which just looks like a little bit of... Um, didn't really look like graining so much, but a sort of um, opening up of the tread on the right front. It's the rears that take most of the punishment here because there's a lot of traction out of slower corners. And because the temperatures are so high, any wheel spin, if you slip the tyres, even the tiniest amount, you just build the temperature, the surface temperature, and then it really destroys the, the sort of degradation levels of these tyres. So it's a, it's a game of real management of those tyres, looking after them. You're desperate to bury the throttle out of every corner, but you've got to be really kind of controlled and measured about how you do it. Russell's still out there on the hard tyre, having not yet pitted, worked his way up into seventh. Lewis's tyres, I think you're right, Lewis's tyres have gone a massive slide. His rear tyres have looked to me like the surface is overheated. He slid hugely out of turn 13. Massive drift across the circuit and it's allowed Verstappen to close right up. He's now just, just over a second behind Hamilton. He's missed the DRS detection point on this lap, but next time around, he'll be right in the DRS zone and I think Hamilton's going to be under threat here. Yeah, just over a second is the gap currently between Hamilton and Verstappen in this fight for third place advantage Hamilton for the time being but his tyres are screaming on that Mercedes lap 33 of 70 of the Hungarian Grand Prix Piastri leads his teammate Norris by almost four and a half seconds Hamilton then third with Verstappen now hunting him down for that final podium spot Leclerc ahead of Sainz fifth and sixth then Russell still to pit from that hard tyre worked his way up from 17th to 7th as it currently stands Alonso and Stroll eighth and ninth with Sonoda holding on to that final point but now Perez is within half 
half a second of the Japanese driver. Magnussen is 12th ahead of Bottas. Sergeant Gasly, the top 15. Then it's Joe Guanyu. Daniel Ricciardo's down in 17th. Hulkenberg is 18th. Albon, it's not been working out for. It really, Ricciardo, Hulkenberg, Albon, Ocon, the last four drivers in this race, it is not working out for them right now on lap 33 of 70 as Perez does get through on Yuki Tsunoda to get himself up into the points. So here comes Max Verstappen then. He's coming out of the final corner now. It goes across the DRS detection zone. He's well within the one second now, just 0.8. So he will get the rear wing open all the way along the start finish straight now. That's what they've just come on to. Hamilton just ahead of Verstappen. He should get that flap open, which will close down as he, he hunts him down into turn one. Not close enough there, but that's OK. He's right underneath the rear wing because they get another burst of DRS now. Coming out of turn one, Verstappen opens the rear wing again. I don't think he's quite close enough. Still Ooh, not quite. But he closes up through the left-hander of two. Hamilton takes the wider line to block off Verstappen through the right-hand kink of turn three as they now head uphill to the blind left-hander of four. No way through there on that occasion for Max Verstappen. But, I mean, I know the Red Bull DRS is particularly effective, but DRS around here has a minimal effect. It's only a 610 meter straight, and then the burst from turn, the exit of turn one to turn two is less than half of that. So you've got to be really close to them coming out of that final corner as well to really get that full effect of DRS. Yeah, you have. The real, the only real opportunity with DRS is along the, the main straight because that second burst of it, as you say, is just too short. But of course, what you need for that is, is good traction out of the final corner so that you can get along that main straight at maximum speed. And Lewis Hamilton is going to struggle with that because his rear tyres are gone. So here they go again then through the last couple of corners. Max will get another opportunity as they head back onto that start finish straight to try and make a difference into turn one. Round the final corner there, Lewis Hamilton in third being chased by the Red Bull of Max Verstappen and it's not all going Verstappen's way so far, he qualified third he's lost the position with DRS, tries to move to the inside, Hamilton slightly defends, lock up from the front right, Hamilton runs deep into the corner, then doesn't get the traction on exit, side by side into the left hander of turn two Verstappen on the outside, runs out wide can't keep it on the road, can the Dutchman almost runs into the grass. Hamilton holds on to the position as they now head up towards the left-hander of turn four. An uncharacteristic uncharac mistake there from Verstappen. It really was, wasn't it? Lewis Hamilton's rear tyres are absolutely shot to bit. He's got zero traction, which allowed Verstappen to get close enough. But that short burst of DRS, the second stint out of turn one, after a major lockup for Hamilton in turn one, allowed Verstappen to get right up alongside him. That's what you're hearing in the background now. Verstappen pulls alongside, gets in front towards turn two, but because he's offline, he ran so far wide that actually Lewis was able to come back through again. So you're right, his positions of the, the position of the car and that Red Bull just meant he had zero traction coming out of that corner and Lewis is back in front of him. The winds must have changed all of a sudden over the Hungary because Piastri has just lost almost two seconds to his teammate Lando Norris, who is now a second and a half behind him. The fight for this win is still on, despite Norris being told that his battles with Verstappen I just can't go by, so the thing is just turn. It's unbelievable. He's not happy, Verstappen. He's talking about he's changed the settings on his brake bias. That's the bias between how much braking happens on the front axle as opposed to the rear when you hit the pedal. And he's saying it's not giving him the right effect. You just saw a huge lockup from Lewis, but then another one from Verstappen. So he's hitting the pedal and either he's locking the, the front brakes or the rear brakes, but he's not able to make the adjustment to get the car back into his liking. So he's a frustrated man and I can see why, because he's now stuck behind a Mercedes that's not as quick as he is, but he just can't get past. I want to know what's happened to Oscar Piastri because 1.6 seconds is the gap now. We haven't seen any replays or any pictures of, of a mistake potentially from Piastri or have his tyres given up the ghost because Lando Norris has just dramatically closed in on his teammate. Last lap around though, Piastri a 124.5, Lando Norris a 124.2. So Norris is the faster driver now out on the circuit. Hamilton is third, still battling with Verstappen. Leclerc and Sainz in fifth and sixth, kind of in a little bit of no man's land. Alonso's worked his way back up to seventh. He really is in no man's land. Perez is closing in on no, a couple of seconds behind. Then it's Stroll. Sonoda rounds out the top 10. Russell has finally pitted and come out in 11th. Then it's Bottas, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Albon 15th, Joe, Magnussen, Ocon and Sargent in 19th. We've now lost Pierre Gasly who was told to retire
a couple of laps ago, going from poor to miserable for a race weekend for Pierre Gasly, having not even started the Grand Prix at the uh, Silverstone round two weeks ago, retires from the Hungarian Grand Prix. Verstappen closing back in on Hamilton, but not close enough. No, the problem is that Verstappen's very, very quick in the first sector, but in the second and final sector, crucially the final sector, it's the Mercedes, even though his tyres on the, on the car of Lewis Hamilton are definitely not in the best shape, that's got the, the best performance in that final sector. So Verstappen just not able to exit the final corner close enough down the relatively short straight, uh, comparison to some circuits, to be close enough to make that DRS uh, effect work for him. So a very frustrating few laps. Verstappen is definitely quicker. His car is in better shape, but Lewis defending very, very well. And while they, though, are fighting, Charles Leclerc is closing. He's got the fastest lap as the Ferrari driver. He's 1.8 seconds behind Verstappen. Then it's Carlos Sainz, who's really a little bit more detached. Eight seconds back, followed by Alonso, who is a further 32 seconds behind. Uh, Perez has though close right in on Fernando Alonso within a second he should be able to make the move that Red Bull much faster than the Aston Martin ahead of it uh, here we go then across the start finish line down the main straight we go towards turn one Hamilton in third Verstappen in fourth with the RS has a little look to the inside but doesn't find a way through Hamilton putting that Mercedes in all the right places but can't get as good attraction on the exit of turn one but then Verstappen can't find a way through in the short run down to turn two. Hamilton, though, takes a much wider line through two. That tightens the entrance for turn three. Verstappen trying to find a way through. Looks left, then looks right, but uphill towards turn four. There's only one one car through there. Verstappen has to wait another lap again. This is great stuff, isn't it? It's not since 2021 we've really seen battles like this between these two. They are all over each other, and Leclerc is closing them both down very, very quickly to the point where Leclerc is now visible just behind the Red Bull of Max Verstappen and very quickly will be in DRS zones. Battle for third is on. Battle for the lead is on. 1.2 seconds now between Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris. Although last lap around, they were fairly nip and tuck. Piastri last lap a 124.3. Norris a 124.2. But Norris has found a little bit more pace in this, pa in this part of the race compared to his teammate Piastri, who was sitting pretty on around about four seconds a gap at one moment in time. Time. Round the final corner we go then, lap 39 of 70, seven tenths the gap between Hamilton and Verstappen, but he's just not able to close in on that main straight. Can he try a late dive down the inside into turn one? No, doesn't even make a move. And Leclerc now much closer than he's ever been on the exit of turn one, but he's still out of that DRS range of Verstappen ahead of him. It's Hamilton third, Verstappen fourth, Leclerc fifth in what is shaping up to be a fantastic Fantastic battle. Yeah, Verstappen's probably only got one or two more laps without having to be right looking in his mirrors because of Leclerc closing into DRS range. About one and a half seconds now the gap. And Lando gap now is 1.3. Okay to race the Papai car, but still the mid 40s. Okay to race yeah, between okay. the two McLarens. So they're giving them license to go and race, but he's the mid 40s is what he's suggesting. He, he wants to keep a lap time that's still going to look after the tyres so they can get to the end of the race. If they just allow them to go all out now, they will destroy tyres and, and the, whole, the overall strategy will be compromised. So I'll tell you what's going to be really interesting as we get into the second half of this race, because very soon in the next few laps, we're into the pit window for the second and what we expect to be the final stop for most people as Lewis Hamilton is now called in we know his tyres have been in struggling he missed oh they've no, changed he's told their to mind. stay out last minute he stays out round the final corner we go again was told to box then told to stay out and engagement once again from Verstappen for the DRS down to turn one Hamilton takes the tighter line that means Verstappen has to take the wider one. He'll get better traction on the exit. Another dose of DRS2 down the inside for turn two. No, he picks the outside line, but then switches back to the inside. That gives Hamilton the inside. Hamilton saying it's a long way to go on these tyres. Hamilton, whose tyres have been struggling now for the last few laps, but he's doing a superb job of keeping Verstappen behind. But he's got the scarlet red Ferrari of Charles Leclerc right behind him as well. 
Well, Verstappen desperately wanted him to peel into the pits at that point, but making him stay out has frustrated the Red Bull driver for another lap. Mode 9. Oh, press and hold the overtake. Why? Why for a And then press and hold the overtake, Max, if you're in mode 7. Thank you. He is not a happy bunny. Hasn't been happy all day, Verstappen, has he? They're talking about the overtake button, which is a button that you press on the steering wheel, which gives you maximum deployment of everything. If you want to try and make an overtake, you can also be pushing it for defending. They want him past this Mercedes because it's costing them time. The Mercedes of Hamilton does now peel into the pit lane, freeing up Verstappen. He's now got Leclerc in his mirror. In fact, Leclerc peels into the pits as well. So Verstappen let off the hook, a little bit of clear air, and it's now uh, Leclerc versus versus Hamilton in the pits. Let's see how quick the pit stops are. They haven't been blisteringly fast, but 2.8 seconds for Hamilton, 2.9 seconds for Leclerc. Hamilton feeds back out ahead of Leclerc. Piastri leads Norris. Verstappen now up into third. Sainz is fourth. Hamilton will feed out now in fifth. Nice bit of clear track with Leclerc, though, right behind him, but they've gone for a split in tyres. Hamilton on the hard, Leclerc on the medium. Well, they had to because Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes had two sets of the hards, whereas the Ferraris, the um, McLarens and the Red Bulls all had two sets of the mediums. And this is now what's going to be fascinating, because which of those two tyres is going to work best in the, in the closing stages of this race? We didn't get the extreme high temperatures that some predicted. That would tend to suit the harder tyre, uh, sorry, the medium tyre. And that, of course, is what we've got on the McLarens. The hard tyre we absolutely would need if it got really extremely hot, as with that Piastri running very wide. Yes, but we just in a replay that was running very wide through turn 11 the right hander that was on lap 33 we're on lap 41 now so i wonder if that was where norris lost uh, piastri lost all of that time to norris and he hasn't really been able to gain it back because since then it's remained at about one and a half seconds it's quite impressive how we let us have good undercut in this completely race that was max verstappen on the radio there not too happy with how his race is panning out from a strategy perspective. If Verstappen pits now, he would only just come out ahead of Leclerc. It would be nip and tuck, and Leclerc would have more momentum and warmer tyres. Yeah, so they've done it again, haven't they? Because they did it. This is the same thing that happened to Verstappen in the first stint. They were they were sort of undercut by Lewis Hamilton. They, they left themselves in no man's land, no man's land, and they've kind of done it again. They had to respond immediately to give themselves a chance of staying with Hamilton and Leclerc. I think the reality is that when they do eventually make their pit stop, unless Verstappen's got something that he's been holding back or been held back because he's been behind the Mercedes for so long, unless they've got something very special, he can come out here behind both Hamilton and Leclerc when these pit stops shake out. Lap 42 of 70 of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Well over halfway distance now. Piastri leads 1.8 seconds over Norris. We, think we will not try and cover Hamilton. It's very early to stop now. And that was Piastri being told on the radio, we're not going to cover Hamilton too early to stop now, is what he is being told. So it is quite early, but Hamilton, of course, has gone onto the harder tyre, which will last longer. Leclerc had to go onto the medium tyre, albeit with that early stop. So it's going to be a tough job, a big ask for Charles Leclerc to both get to the end of the race, but certainly to get to the end of the race with the pace that he needs up against Hamilton. He might be quicker right now when they're very close to each other on the racetrack, but as this stint unfolds with a, another, what, 25 or so laps to go, it's going to be a tough ask for, for Leclerc to go that far with pace on the medium tyre. Fernando Alonso, we're just seeing a replay of him getting through uh, on Valtteri Bottas' Sauber to get the Spaniard up into 11th. He's 10 seconds away from points at the moment. That's currently occupied by Sonoda in the top 10. Piastri leads now, he's steadily building his gap back up, but it's, it's not really able to escape between the 1.6 and the 1.8 mark since his mistake on lap 33. Norris in second was told they could race until the mid 40s. I presume that means the mid 40s in terms of uh, the lap count. We are on lap 43 at the moment. Verstappen is third, then it's Sainz fourth, Hamilton fifth, Leclerc is sixth, ahead of Perez recovering from 16th where he qualified up into seventh. Russell recovering from 
from 17th up into 8th. Stroll is 9th. Sonoda holds on to the final points paying position at the current moment in time with Alonso in 11th, Bottas 12th, Ricardo Hülkenberg, Albon the top 15. Then it's Magnussen, Ocon, Sargent, Joe Guanyu, the 19 drivers that remain in this race with Pierre Gasly retiring his Alpine having started from the pit lane. Alpine saying they have retired Pierre's car as a result of a suspected hydraulic leak. Yeah, disappointing weekend all round, really, for the Alpine team. Uh, messed up qualifying, really, when they were sat in the garage when they should have been out on track as it was at its fastest. Consequently, started the race last and second last. And now one of the two cars has, has actually retired. So disappointing weekend after a run of reasonable form for them in the, latter, uh, in, the, in the last few rounds where they've managed to score points on a consistent basis. But at the front end, things are looking good here for McLaren because their major contenders have somewhat fallen away and it's McLaren who've maintained their pace. Their biggest battle is going to be between each other because they've got about seven and a half seconds back to Verstappen. That's the gap at the moment. Behind that is, is the Ferrari of Carlos Sainz. They, of course, haven't made their pit stops yet. And then it's Hamilton and Leclerc. Those two could be the ones that might still be in a fight for the final podium position when the rest of these strate uh, strategic pit stops play out here bits of action further down the pack side by side between Bottas and Ricardo both drivers fighting for their futures in Formula One and fighting over 12th place no points up for grabs for these guys at the moment R the RB driver of Ricardo wins out that battle through turn one Ricardo 12th Bottas now down to 13th but Bottas having a better run of things for the Sauber team who have been on a dismal run of re uh, results indeed they sit plumb last in the Constructors Championship with zero points to their name. Meanwhile, RB sitting pretty up in sixth with 31 points to their name. And it was a, a fairly decent move by Ricardo with the aid of DRS to get Bottas into turn one. Yeah, nicely under control from Daniel Ricardo. After a disappointing first half of the race, he's actually worked his way back up. He is in uh, 12th place now. His teammate Yuki Sonoda just a couple of places ahead. Um, so that could get quite close. Uh, 12th and 10th for the two RBs. Um, everybody generally now in sort of tyre preservation mode in this stint. They're trying to get to the optimum lap to make their final stop and then we'll get a race to the flag. There's 25 laps to go now but nobody going particularly quickly. Everyone just managing their pace. Verstappen, of course, oh, there we go, Lando Norris being called into the pits. And that is interesting because that's the second of the two McLarens coming into the pits first, which potentially feels like an undercut. I'm sure they won't allow that to happen, but normally, as you said earlier on, Piastri would get first call here. Yeah, but Norris got first call the first time around, didn't he? Because of uh, protecting from that undercar. Down into the pit lane then for Lando Norris. Pits from second place. The man who started on pole position but lost the lead on lap one into turn one. 2.3 seconds is the stop for Lando Norris, who gets uh, the medium tyre put onto his car. That means Verstappen goes through into second. Signs up into third, and Norris is going to feed out. Oh, he's going to have a bit of traffic from the Salva. OK, Oscar, Lando has pitted to cover Hamilton to make sure he covers Hamilton. We'll manage that situation. Best pace from you now, best pace. And that was Piastri's radio uh, as a little lockup actually from Lando Norris coming into turn one as he gets round uh, the Sauber of Joe Guan Yu, who's currently 19 and last. But that radio message then almost a bit of reassurance for Oscar Piastri there. Yeah, exactly. Just explaining why the, the other McLaren has pitted first and crucially saying we will manage that. And what he means by that is he won't allow that undercut to be the thing that wins Lando Norris the race over Piastri. It doesn't feel fair. They've done that to cover off the likes of Hamilton and Leclerc, who could well pose a threat later in the race. I don't think they're actually going to pose too much of a threat, but there's a risk there, so they have to do this. It's the right thing to, to, to make the call. You have to say, Oscar Piastri has so far driven a very good race. Cool, calm and collected. Yeah. Got his elbows out on lap one. We haven't heard too much from him over the team radio either. For a man who hasn't got a Grand Prix victory yet, and it's his teammate that has been knocking on the door a little bit more often than Piastri has done. Yeah. So far, after 47 laps, Piastri is driving a blinder here. He is. Uh, the problem McLaren are going to have now is Lando Norris is just putting a blisteringly fast lap, of course, on those fresh tyres, the fresh mediums that have just gone onto his car. He's now going to go very, very quickly, which is going to put Piastri under pressure. Yes, they may well manage it, and they may well you know, instigate a switch because uh, of the way they had to play that call, but here's Piastri being boxed now so we'll see actually how powerful that undercut is with the, the, the fresh mediums on Lando Norris's car a very quick outlap 
Piastri now makes his way round into the pit lane and the gap about 18 and a half seconds between the two McLarens as he enters the pits. And a pit loss is between 20 and 22 seconds depending how good your actual stop is. So right now, this is going the way of Lando Norris all of a sudden and Piastri is not going to be happy if he feels he has been undercut by his own team having driven a sublime race so far. Lando Norris is currently fourth. He's right behind Carlos Sainz who is also told to come into the pits. Piastri then does uh, feed into the pits, shadows the final corner, it runs parallel to the inside, a little bit of a lock up as he gets down to the pit limiter, 80 kilometers an hour towards the McLaren mechanics who await for him, he needs a very fast pit stop. Lando Norris is making his way around the final corner now as Piastri is released, 2.9 seconds, Lando Norris onto the main straight, Norris coming towards the end of the pit lane, so too is Piastri, Norris is gonna take the lead from Oscar Piastri and take second place, Verstappen has the lead as it currently stands, but the net lead going towards Lando Norris who makes his way through to turn one and already into turn two as Piastri only just exits turn one now. We stopped too short that first hit mate. Okay copy. That's Hamilton on the radio down in fourth but that is going to ruffle Oscar Piastri's feathers, surely, Mark. Yeah, neither, dri neither driver is going to end up particularly happy here because Piastri is going to be miffed that he's been undercut. Lando Norris is not going to necessarily want to give the place back, but the even bigger problem McLaren might have is even if they manage this and they instigate a switch back around, so put Piastri back in front, i.e. allowing, uh, in instigating that Norris gives the place back, the two McLarens are going to be on exactly the same bit of tarmac for the remainder of this Grand Prix and fighting each other. Okay, Lando, Oscar has just pitted. He will likely come out just behind you. We'd like to re-establish the order at your convenience. We'd like to re-establish the order at your convenience and that's not going to go extremely well because Piastri runs out wide on the exit at turn 12, kicks up a little bit of the gravel, manages to keep it pointed in a straight line. So McLaren then have asked Norris to drop behind Piastri at a moment of his choosing. The gap at the moment is just over three seconds. We haven't heard a reply from Lando Norris. Will he play ball? Well, he's just set the fastest lap of the race, so will he play ball? I suspect he will play ball because it is the right thing to do, but he's not going to sit there for the rest of this Grand Prix. He's going to be right under the rear wing of his sister McLaren and feeling confident. I feel like this is going to be a battle now right to the end, which McLaren have almost brought upon themselves. They had a nice three or four second gap between the two, which it almost could have seen out to the end of the Grand Prix. These radio messages are so polite from McLaren, aren't they? Well, if you don't mind, would you just, when, when it's convenient, would you let him pass? Just tell him to do what you need him to do. This is a Grand Prix at stake here. Come on. Ah, but a little mistake as well, though, from Piastri, probably pushing as well, trying to close that gap between himself and Lando Norris. Norris has the fastest lap and the gap currently a few seconds between them. So Norris isn't going to slow down. Piastri needs to speed up and get right behind his teammate. Verstappen leads this race, but has just been told to make his second pit stop. So Norris will go through and retake the lead and Piastri will slot into second. But this could be a pivotal moment for McLaren in the way they run their drivers, in their driver relationship. Right now, Piastri is looking like he's being made the number two driver. It's been Lando Norris who has so far been the one knocking on the door for race wins consistently. Lando Norris who has the more experience as a Grand Prix driver. Oscar Piastri who has come into this season, the second season in Formula One, as one of the hotly tipped drivers. He made his way through Formula Renault, won the championship in the first year of asking, won the championship of the first year of asking in Formula Three, the same again in Formula Two. Alpine lost him as a race driver. He went to McLaren and Really, it's Norris who has had the upper hand. Piastri has shown glimmers of superb pace and he could have really laid down a marker this afternoon. He could still lay down that marker, but right now, if it goes the way of Lando Norris holding on to the lead of this Grand Prix, there will be huge questions being asked from Oscar Piastri and his side of the garage. Yeah, they will. Now he's going quickly, uh, Oscar, and he needs to here because Lando Norris has put in two or three fastest laps of the race. He took two tenths out of him last time around, so he's not slowing down, Lando. And if that's the case, that's fine. McLaren have said to him, do it whenever you're ready, do it at your convenience. Piastri needs to take control of this situation and race him. He needs to get back underneath the rear wing of the other McLaren car and then they can make the switch 
and then he needs to defend with all his might to get to the end of this race. He needs elbows out. Verstappen, who has now made that pit stop, is now on a fresh set of medium tyres, which are going to be younger than most of the other people around them on those medium tyres, has now got an opportunity to try and chase down Leclerc and Hamilton, who are on much older tyres, with about 19 laps to go. Lando Norris will do it at his convenience in three to five business Last days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what he'll do. That's what it will be convenient for Lando Norris. You suddenly, you're the man who started on pole position. You lost the Grand Prix, you lost the, the lead in lap one, turn one. You've now got the lead back. Your team made the call. Here's Piastri on the radio. Okay, Oscar. So once you get to Lando, we will swap the position. We'll swap position. But we want to avoid Lando having to give up a lot of race time. As we have mentioned and suspected there, they need him to close up. So there's what's happened in the background there, I can tell you from, from some experience probably, is that a bunch of radio messages we haven't heard where Lando's been on the radio saying, look, it's fine, I'll switch the positions, but I'm not slowing down here. You know, I don't want to compromise my own race, which is fair enough. So now Oscar does have to, like we just said a minute ago, he's got to get you know, the hammer down and he's got to catch his teammate and then they can make the switch. They can't expect Lando to just park it and wait for him to catch up. This is the middle of a Grand Prix so Oscar's got to do his bit here and if we look at the lap times he did actually take a couple of tenths out of Lando last time around so Oscar's now trying his best to try and catch up but Lando will not make it easy for him lap 52 of 70 Lando Norris now leads the Hungarian Grand Prix ahead of his teammate Oscar Piastri Lewis Hamilton is third but feels that the team stopped him too early for his latest pit stop out there on the hard tyre Leclerc is fourth and 1.2 seconds behind Verstappen down to fifth ahead of Sainz then it's Russell Perez in seventh and eighth recovering from their lowly grid positions Sonoda and Alonso round out the top ten Ricardo is 11th ahead of Stroll Hulkenberg 13th ahead of Albon, then it's Magnussen who rounds out the top 15. Ocon is 16th ahead of Sargent. Bottas and Joe, the two Sauber drivers, are the last two cars in this race, with only Pierre Gasly retiring due to a suspected hydraulic leak in his Alpine. There is a lot of racing still to come in these last 18 laps or so. Uh, Piastri now going very quickly. He's taking time out of Lando Norris now, lap after lap. So he will start to close down that gap that's currently just under three seconds. Um, but also Max Verstappen, because he's on those fresher medium tyres, as opposed to Hamilton and Leclerc, who stopped very early, that's going to be a race on as well, because Leclerc now has DRS under uh, Hamilton, but Verstappen put in the fastest lap of the Grand Prix and is going to close up on the pair of them very, very quickly and have a tyre offset in the closing stages, which might allow him to find his way back onto a podium here. Round the final quarter we go once again crossing the line for lap 53 of 70. Here's our race leader. And Lando, radio check, please. Yes, slowly clear. OK, save the tyres in turn four and turn 11, then, please. Radio check, please. Loud and clear. Save the tyres, please. I wonder if they haven't really been getting anything back from Lando <laughs> yeah, Norris in that their request. That's what that sounds like, isn't it? Are you, are you hearing us? Did you hear that last request? So tyre saving, you know, you can look at that two ways. Of course, he needs to save tyres to make sure he's got enough performance left at the end of this race. But telling one driver to save tyres will also slow the lap time and allow the other one to catch up. So I suspect a lot of mind games and politics going on in the background. I would love to be a fly on the wall on that pit wall at McLaren right now. <laughs> On the flip side, what a scenario for McLaren to suddenly be in. Yeah. We've spoken a lot in the build-up to this race about a, a few uh, lacking that winning instinct and, and lacking sometimes the right strategy calls over the last few Grand Prix where a win has slipped through their hands. Verstappen first. Well, that's some gentle introduction. No, mate, don't give me that now. You guys give me this strategy, OK? I'm trying to rescue myself. Verstappen uh, continues to uh, be troubled out there on track, although he really is handing the back of Charles Leclerc. And uh, we're not surprised by short, blunt radio messages between Verstappen and his engineer, Jean-Pierre Lambier. See, they do have a very good relationship that allows them to do that. Uh, but Verstappen, uh, this is probably one of the most frustrated races we've seen him be. He's really closing in on the back of Charles Leclerc. But again, the DRS opportunities are just not quite long enough to allow him to get 
around or down the inside of Charles Leclerc. And then it's line astern, really, through the middle sector. This the battle for fourth and fifth as Russell comes into the pits uh, another time. 2.2 seconds, his stop. Uh, he continues to recover from 17th position. But just to finish off my point on McLaren, you know, it, we've been talking about how it's been strategy and lacking killer instinct for the win. Well, now they're looking at a one-two and they've got driver management problems. Suddenly it <laughs> feels like, you know, we're, we're Nico Rosberg, Lewis Hamilton, Mercedes era again. But these are the problems you get when you're fighting at the front. It's a different set of problems you, you tend to have when you're further down the, the, the order. No one cares between the two drivers. No one necessarily cares to anywhere near the same extent which driver finishes first or second. If you're actually fighting back in the, the sort of 14th, 15th position, the drivers can be friendly about it. They can be jovial. They can have a laugh about it afterwards, but not when you're in championship fighting positions. That's when things get really serious. You do get the scrutiny upon you as well, but you also have to manage the personalities and the characters of these two guys. Of course, Lando Norris feels like he should be a number one driver. Driver, but there's no way Oscar Piastri feels like he should be a number two. That's a challenge they're going to you know, have unfolding as the season goes on. Lap 55 of 70. Still a heated battle between Leclerc and Verstappen for fourth and fifth rages on. Norris leads. 3.7 seconds now. The gap between Norris and his teammate Piastri. That gap is not closing, Mark. Who's winning this one? Well, look, they've been so gentle about when they do this. Landon Norris can do it whenever he likes and quite oh come on he's not gonna do it well quite frankly I can here he is we need you to save more tyres please and we do want to let Oscar through uh, we should have boxed him first then surely no oh there you go there's your answer doesn't matter I mean it does for me maybe there's your answer. Lando does not agree they should be switching back. He feels that the strategy is played out his way, and that's the way that, that it needs to stay. And I can see this from both sides, because if you're Lando Norris, you haven't done anything wrong. You've driven a good, solid race, and the fact that things, the cards fell your way is racing. He's, he's not put a foot wrong all day. So I can understand that, and his argument will be, well, look, let, let, let Oscar catch me up and then we can talk about it. But why is it three and a half seconds back, which is what he is now? There's no discussion to be had. Last lap around, Norris was a 122.1. Piastri was a little quicker with a 121.8. The gap, 3.6 seconds. Oh, there's going to be some fireworks at the end of this Grand Prix, I'll tell you that. A couple of races ago, we had a conversation at the British Grand Prix about can you be friends with a teammate when race wins and championships are at stake? And I said, no, absolutely can't happen. It can happen further down the order. You can be friendly, you can have a laugh. Not, not when there's a race win or a championship at stake. That's what McLaren are about to start experiencing for the first time in a very, very long time. If this is me and you, Mark, our friendship is done. I'm telling you that right now. It is strictly a talk when we needed to basis after that. But this is going to be long debated. But hey, it's still lap 56 of 70 and still a lot more to unfold in what has been and turning into a fascinating Hungarian Grand Prix. The penultimate race before we get to the summer break. We'll head to Belgium at spa Francorchamps next week for the 14th race this season. Season. Lap 57 now, Norris, 3.3 seconds to the gap, coming down incrementally, Hamilton in third, then it's Leclerc still in front of Verstappen, Leclerc is the sound you're hearing down the main straight, Verstappen is right behind him, two tenths of a second with the aid of DRS, and the toe closing right up, now finally dives down the inside, runs a little deep though, Leclerc fights back, hugs the apex, can he get the better traction? No, he can't. DRS for Verstappen to boot on the exit of turn one. Verstappen finally waiting his time, makes the move stick. Verstappen up to fourth, Leclerc down to fifth. Yeah, and, and that's frustrating for Verstappen because he's used up quite a lot of his tyres doing that. Lando, we still think you're using the tyres too much. Turn four, turn 11, and the rear's exit. Turn six, turn nine, Oscar's 3.5. I know you'll do the right thing. I'm, oh, I'm really this is sorry. emotional. I'm a huge fan of McLaren. I, I, I'm a massive supporter of everything they're doing. 
but they need to be more decisive in this situation. If they firmly believe that's what they want to happen, they need to be forceful here and they need to say someone needs to come on the radio, Andreas, and just give out some absolute orders here because it's what Ron Dennis used to do. He did it very, very rarely, but if it had to happen, Ron Dennis used to step in. And when he did, the drivers knew exactly that that was, you know, it was now serious. This is it's tiptoeing around this. You know, we, are you going to do the right thing? You know, just, just tell them. Just bang their heads together. Tell them what to do. It's Will Joseph who asked that question or said that statement to Lando Norris. Andrea Stella is sat there on the pit wall. Andrea Stella, who does have that winning instinct for years. He was Fernando Alonso's lead race engineer at Ferrari. Has moved over to McLaren and has been a stunning signing by Zach Brown. But this could be a pivotal moment in the McLaren story. We all love seeing the resurgence, but when you're stuck, when wins are on the board, suddenly the stakes are higher. And Lando Hiroshi is stressed about the tire energies. I'm, <laughs> I'm not buying this. I'm not buying, I'm not buying this. Look, I, I'm not. By the way, I'm not saying that. The, the call they're making is right or wrong because I think you can argue it from both sides and actually from a team perspective you don't care you've got a one-two it doesn't matter which way round it is yes it feels unfair to Oscar Piastri if it ends this way but that's another question altogether the point is if as a team you've decided that's what's going to happen you now need to enforce it you know, you need to make sure and establish that the team is bigger than your drivers here and the drivers are driving for the team. And at the moment, they're not doing that. The consequences of that are the driver now will feel like if this is the way it stays and Lando's able to just ignore these team orders, if you're able to just let that play out, what sort of, how does that establish a precedent moving forward? There are furrowed brows and heads in hands in a very concerned manner down on the McLaren pit wall, which is strange because when you take a step back, they're on course for a one-two finish, which would be absolutely astonishing for a team who not so long ago were down in the doldrums, changing their engine partner with almost every season that went by, couldn't get on top of their car with the driver lineups they had either, changes in management and a rebirth now. Turn four, turn 11. It's going to get boring. That's uh, turn four, turn 11 being told to save to save the tyres, but we're never hearing a response from Lando Norris. That could just well be because the television directors are not playing it, uh, but we did have that message earlier of a radio check. I wonder if Norris is even entertaining the idea. The argument here from Norris, that Norris's argument will be, you know, um, Oscar's got to catch him up. And he can't, he doesn't seem able to do that at the moment. He had a, a little stint of going quickly when he first put the tyres on. They're now in a, a bit of a lull now where Oscar just cannot get close enough. And I think that's fair enough because even if you were to switch them, it looks like... Lando Norris is the faster of the two McLarens. That's what the lap times are saying. So even if you were to instigate a switch of position, you might then be in a position where you've got the faster of the two McLarens sitting behind the slower of the two, in which case you open up the opportunity for a battle, potential risk, and, and who knows what might happen. So I get why everyone might feel like it's unfair to Oscar. I completely empathise with that. But if Norris is the faster of the two cars, over time it would have surely shaped out this way anyway. Gap's got up. It's over four seconds between Norris and Piastri. It's lap 60 of 70. Norris leads 4.2 seconds over Piastri. Hamilton is third. Verstappen fourth. Leclerc rounds out the top five ahead of his teammate Sainz. Perez in seventh ahead of Russell in eighth, who holds the fastest lap. Sonoda is ninth. The only man who has stopped just once. Fair effort from Yuki Sonoda there, recovering well from his big crash in the final part of qualifying. If he could hold on yeah. to two precious points in ninth, he's got Alonso, who's only a second and a half behind him, though, in tenth. Then comes Stroll, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Albon, Magnus in the top 15. Ocon, Sergeant, Bottas, and Joe, the 19 drivers that remain in this race with one retirement in the form of Pierre Gasly in the Alpine. So, 10 laps to go. Lewis Hamilton is currently on 199 career podiums and sitting in third place, but Max Verstappen is coming at him hard. He is just over a second behind. He is not going to get DRS this time. We've been here before as they get back onto the start-finish straight. The Red Bull does, in fact, he did just dip under the one-second mark at the vital crucial moment, so he has got DRS. He's going to close right up behind the Mercedes again. OK, Lando, 10 laps to go. We think both cars are using their tyres too much. Just remember every single Sunday morning meeting we have. 
just remember every single Sunday morning meeting we have. This is gold radio that we're hearing from Will Joseph to Lando Norris. It almost feels like he's guilt tripping him. He is exactly, that's exactly what he's doing. And you know, knowing a little bit about Lando, it'll work or it could work. He, he might well just have these next 10 laps to, to think about that. Yeah, uh, tell him to catch up then, please. There you go. If he catches him, he'll do the right thing. But until he catches him, he's going to quite happily keep this gap at what is now nearly five seconds. I don't think Piastri can catch him. We will dive into this in so much more detail in our Check and Flag podcast later on today, which will be available on BBC Sounds wherever you get your podcasts. But just worth remembering, the man who manages Oscar Piastri is Mark Webber. Famously not bad for a number two driver. Famously outdone by Sebastian Vettel, Malaysia, multi-21. And the press conference after was absolute cinematic scenes. It was TV if, gold. If anybody, though, to, to have in Piastri's corner is more suitable, it's Mark Webber at a time like this. So no matter what happens, Piastri will have the right people, the right mindset behind him to be able to push forward. Comes but Verstappen. five seconds the gap, lap 62, round the outside at turn two, and it's almost contact between Verstappen and Hamilton in the battle for third, wheel to wheel. Verstappen has to bail out of it. Hamilton holds on. Wow, that was very, very close. It was a run up the hill, out of turn one, the second of the DRS zones, allowed Verstappen to get really, really close and alongside, but it was Lewis Hamilton that had the inside line. Coming out of the corner, two black number 11s, two big black lines on the tarmac where Verstappen buried the throttle, spun the rear wheels up and laid tracks of rubber, which will not, by the way, do his tyres any good at all in this battle. They are chasing each other down with less than 10 laps to go. It's Verstappen on the medium tyre, which will not like these kind of this kind of treatment. Hamilton, although the tyre is much older, is the harder compound tyre, a little bit more durable. Did you leave the car set? I think you were behind at the apex, Max. OK, whatever that. Um, feisty radio messages continue between Max Verstappen and John Piero Lambayesi. If he was ahead at the apex, then he's entitled to a car width of room. But his own engineer saying, I think you were behind, Max. I think Formula One's going to need to bring in a team of councillors at the end of this race. Oh, they oh. look at this contact between Verstappen and Hamilton. He dived down the inside of turn one. He was never going to make the corner. Smoke flies and there is contact. Hamilton continues. Verstappen runs off into the runoff area, but rejoins. How on earth? Is there not more damage to that Mercedes or Red Bull? Hamilton holds on to third. Leclerc gets up into fourth. Verstappen falls down into fifth. That is elements of an old Max Verstappen who didn't have the right temperament in these kind of situations. That move, uh, we'll need another look at it, but it was brave. Yeah, no, he can't catch you up. You've proved your point, and it really doesn't matter. These are much bigger size. Manchester, he's still it. As the battle, I, mean, I would have tried to run the cut anyway. If I didn't, I would have gone more. Mate, we did the stop sequence in this order. For the good of the two. Every yeah, I'm starting to attack it, Zipper. Okay, no, I'm trying to protect you, mate. I promise, I'm trying to protect you. Wow, this is just absolutely brilliant. It's like a soap opera playing out in front of us. They are going to need counselling at McLaren. They're going to need counselling at Red Bull because driver and engineer are about to fall out massively. We're going to see a replay of the crash now. Verstappen goes deep, very deep, can't get the car stopped, locks the tyres up. This rear wheel makes contact with the left, the right rear wheel of Verstappen's car, or with Hamilton's car rather, right front wheel. Wheel to wheel contact launches the Red Bull right into the air. Really big. I don't know how that he's got all four wheels still on that wagon manages to live to fight another day so that was for Stappen he arrived out of control into that one he really did arrive out of control two wheels up in the air for Verstappen Hamilton continued to turn in I'm not even going to get into a radio fight with the other teams Max we'll let the shoes do their thing it's childish on the radio childish Wow, OK, we, this is really developing now in a radio war. We've had blood messages between Jean-Pierre Lambertotti and Verstappen, but that felt like it went over the line for, for GP. There'll be a full debrief, I'm sure, across both the uh, McLaren and Red Bull 
uh, uh, debriefing sessions at the end of this race. Lap 65 of 70, by the way. 5.7 seconds, the gap between Norris and Piastri. Will Joseph, Norris's race engineer, pleading with Norris. We're doing this for the good of the team, trying to protect his driver from, I'm sure, a lot of scrutiny that's going to come his way, whether rightly or wrongly. Hamilton is in third, having lived to fight another day. Leclerc fourth. Verstappen's still out there, seemingly getting away with no damage in the top five. That investigation or that collision is uh, noted by the stewards, just by the way. Sainz is sixth, right behind Verstappen now. Perez is seventh. Russell is eighth. Sonoda is ninth. Alonso is a top ten and they are point scorers. This is unbelievable, isn't it? It's just come alive. I don't think I've ever seen a race like this with so much drama off the racetrack. So much drama behind the scenes and amongst them. And I've heard it, having been in these garages. Of course, we didn't broadcast half of it back then. <laughs> Should have heard some of the radio messages to Kimi Raikkonen back in the day. Goodness me. But I tell you what, this is absolutely fascinating, not just for us from an entertainment perspective, but this is something that's got to be managed, particularly if you take the case at McLaren. You know, Lando's response to being told, I'm trying to protect you, you've got to do the right thing, is he's opened up the gap now to six seconds. He's not slowing down, he's going more and more quickly. This is unbelievable stuff, and it will not end at the chequered flag, that's for sure. There's going to be a lot of angry drivers at the end of this race, but Norris was told to pit. He pits. It was the team decision to pit him on the face of it. We haven't heard all of the radio decisions. And to give Norris his due, he's quick, and right now he is quicker. And you don't slow down in Formula 1 to let a teammate through. I can't no. think of any moment that has happened. No. So you, you know where Norris is coming from. Here he is again. There are five laps to go. The way to win a championship is not by yourself, it's with the team. You're going to need Oscar, and you're going to need the team. I, my jaw is on the floor, Mark. This is emotional well, blackmail got... almost. It's just so intriguing how they are, I mean, it's correct, because you do need the team behind you. Yeah. He's absolutely right, and, and as I said, this won't end at the chequered flag, and the problem McLaren have got with this... Oh, yes. So what can we leave this the risk it gets? Understood, Oscar. We're managing it. You're not managing it, and that's the biggest problem here. I've got to say, McLaren have done a wonderful job to get their cars into the, this position. They've got a 14 second gap behind Piastri to Hamilton. They can do whatever they want here and still win this race with four laps to go. But I've got to be honest, I'm with Lando here. I'm with Lando because Oscar cannot catch him. And until, if he can't catch him, he shouldn't win the race. If he's not the fastest car, he shouldn't win the Grand Prix at this point. Last lap around, though, they both did a 122.6. So they're pretty evenly mashed, and that's why I suppose he's not able to make the inroads. But, yeah, but, Oscar, but Piastri did the job at the start. He did the job at the start, but it doesn't matter. You know, the start, you work all the way through the race, working back from this moment at the end. Your strategy is designed to get you to the chequered flag in the quickest way possible. And I know that the cards are point. It's been unlucky for Piastri. I totally get that. But Norris has done the faster, the better job in the, in the closing stint. Piastri also did make that mistake on that 33 where he lost a couple of seconds as yeah, well yeah, so fair. there are multiple factors we'll we will debrief all of it in the check of flag podcast and uh, we know you love it and i think it'll be a good one this afternoon the biggest criticism for me is actually about how mclaren are handling this so if there's a safety car now it's going to make this very awkward please do it now if there's a virtual safety car now, it's going to make this very awkward. Please do it now. That is the message Lando Norris has received once uh, again from his engineer, Will Joseph. And this is uncharted territory for everybody within McLaren to be having these kind of radio conversations. I don't think I've ever heard publicly this length of uh, radio conversation. It. He has slowed down dramatically out of the final corner. But with three laps to go, there are going to be so many questions asked. Norris slows down on the main straight. Piastri sweeps by him and takes the lead of the Hungarian Grand Prix on lap 68 of 70. And what has been an unprecedented move so far from McLaren. Norris on the radio. Piastri and Norris have had a very good relationship up until this weekend. Does that change? Do they race in these last few laps, Mark? Well, the, the point is that they've got so much luxury of a gap behind with 13 and a half seconds. They could do anything. I think the problem the problem is Lando shouldn't have any issue with, with Oscar. There's no issue between the two drivers here, necessarily. It's the issue between Lando and the team. 
And this is embarrassing for McLaren because it's played out in public. You know, as I said, back in my day, a lot of these conversations happened, but they happened in private. We had a separate button on the pit wall. You could, you could, there's a privacy button. You could hide all this stuff. Now it's being played out in front of the world. And the narrative that comes from this will add on to that narrative that's been a little bit indecisive in recent races, which cost them Grand Prix wins. Unfortunately, what should be a great day for the team, a 1-2, locked out the front row. They are going to win this race and come second. And yet this might end up being the bigger story. Well, let's not forget Oscar Piastri is on course to take his first Grand Prix victory in Formula One. And he will for remember that forever. And he will remember it, not just for it being his first, but because of these circumstances as well. Norris is very much keeping with his teammate, half a second the gap, but he's not trying any maneuvers to, to see if he can fight him in the last couple of laps. It's lap 69 of 70. Piastri now leads Norris, Hamilton, Leclerc, Verstappen the top five, Sainz, Perez, Russell, Sonoda, Stroll, now up into the top 10. Alonso's fallen down to 11th and outside of the points. Ricardo is 12th, Hulkenberg 13th, ahead of Albon and Magnussen the top 15th. Then it is Bottas in 16th, Sargent is 17th, Joe Guanyu 18th, and Esteban Ocon 19th and last for Alpine, with his teammate Pierre Gasly out of the race with hydraulic issues issues earlier on, just the one retirement. Well, I'm absolutely amazed that Hamilton's managed to continue, as has Verstappen after the really heavy contact a couple of laps ago. It's now meant that Lewis Hamilton could well be on for his 200th career podium, which is an incredible achievement. But I think he's going to be hugely overshadowed by everything else that's going on. You know, let's take a moment to celebrate what an amazing day this is for McLaren. A 1-2 finish in a Grand Prix is something they haven't had for a very, very long time. And everyone at that Woking base team should be very, very proud of themselves. As we embark on the final lap of the Hungarian Grand Prix, which has so far proven to be like a race no other this season, not entirely due to on track overtakes and action galore, but a mixture between the on track and the off track conversations between team and driver. McLaren chasing down a 1-2 victory. A 1-2 with Oscar Piastri leading the way. The Australian in his second season of Formula One on course to take his first Grand Prix victory in what has been a brilliant drive. He started in second, made the move on lap one into turn one. Norris had a rough first lap, had to recover, but then the team and the pit stops playing out. Norris retaking the lead and almost refusing to give it up. The team wanting him to play the game, that not coming to fruition. And then in the last few laps, Norris then moving out of the way to let his teammate Oscar Piastri slide down the inside on the main straight to regain the lead and now with one final corner Oscar Piastri sees the checkered flag to take his first Grand Prix victory Oscar Piastri is a Formula One winner with a McLaren getting their one two with Lando Norris in second in unprecedented circumstances cheerful news are all around on track but there will be questions asked long into the night about how McLaren have gone about winning this Grand Prix Hamilton rounds out the podium in third with Leclerc and Verstappen finishing in the top five. Catch yourself a breath, mate. That was intense, wasn't it? I mean, unbelievable stuff. A great day for McLaren. Another winner in Formula One this year. That's seven winners in, what, 13 races now. So Formula One, for a start, is in a great place where anyone can win a Grand Prix out of the top eight or even ten cars, perhaps. Wonderful for Lewis Hamilton. Amazing to get him back onto that podium to get another career milestone. And Oscar Piastri, yes, he deserves it. Yes, you can argue that Lando deserves it just as much. Well done, Oscar. Well done. Check and flag. Well done, buddy. Really good. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks for the coordination. Uh, so yeah, sorry. I made the swap a little bit more painful than it needed to be, but uh, yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Well done. Maximum points. Really good weekend. First step one win. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks.
first F1 win for Oscar Piastri, but will he feel like doesn't it is his first time win? Doesn't sound like it, does it? It's going to be tainted. You know, that's the problem here, that there are bigger stories at play off the back of that race. And by the way, not just McLaren's story. Well done, good one, two, good load of points. Progress team. Well deserved. As we said this morning, mate, many more opportunities. And that was Lando Norris. There's, there are bigger stories coming out of this Grand Prix than McLaren getting their first one-two in many, many years. And there shouldn't be. And I don't just mean the McLaren, you know, arguments. Verstappen, I thought we saw a brand new side of McLaren or, or, or a side we haven't seen from a, a long, long time. Frustrated all the way through that race from start to finish. His radio conversations with GP on the, on the pit wall were just as vociferous, just as angry. We saw that anger spilling over into his driving. We haven't seen that for a few years as well. So there's a lot to, to sort of dissect. I mean, our, our Checkered Flag podcast is going to be an epic one. You don't want to miss that, do you? I think it'll be the best one of the season so far. <laughs> and it'll be on BBC Sound later on this evening. Whew, 70 laps then of the Hungarian Grand Prix and it's uh, Oscar Piastri who now makes it seven different race winners from the first 13 races in 2024. And you know what? Lando Norris gets out of the car, heads straight over to Piastri, still sat in his cockpit. They shake hands. Well, there's no beef between those two, is there? There's nothing that either of those drivers did wrong toward each other. And so that was absolutely... I'm, I'm glad that Lando, you know, has managed to put his frustration to one side and, and realise what the right thing to do in that moment is. So it shouldn't affect a friendship from their point of view, but the relationship at the team, you know, that could be a little bit more complicated. Piastri out of the car, straight over to the team to celebrate their 1-2 here in Hungary. Piastri actually becomes the first F1 race winner born in the 21st century wow. after all of that, making history. And despite the circumstances, a smile all the way. And you know what? He shouldn't get... He shouldn't, we shouldn't get caught up in that too much because we were saying this throughout the race. Certainly, the, the, the three quarters of it, Piastri had driven superbly. He'd yeah. done the job that he needed to at the start. He was managing his tyres. His pace was good. Ultimately, there'll be more questions asked to the team than there are the drivers. 100%. Yeah, exactly. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. Both the dri drivers would have been deserving winners of that Grand Prix. And that's a great position for McLaren to be in. You know, they, they dominated this entire weekend. And we haven't been able to say that for a long time. Verstappen wasn't really in it. Ferrari certainly weren't in it. And Mercedes were in a, a different league altogether as well. So McLaren were a step ahead of everybody else this weekend. That is a great position to be in with still half a season to go. Lewis Hamilton finished third, the first driver in history to reach 200 career podium finishes after his win in Silverstone. A nice way to bat that off and actually a bit of a recovery after a, a less than hopeful qualifying for Mercedes yesterday. Leclerc fourth, Verstappen ended up fifth. And with that, the Constructors and the uh, Drivers' Championship gap, but well, it's 51 points now in the Constructors, the gap between Red Bull and uh, McLaren, who displace Ferrari for second. And then between Verstappen and Norris, it's 69 points now between the two in the fight for the Drivers' title, Piastri stays in fifth, but uh, is much closer now behind Carlos Sainz in the championship. Verstappen was fifth, Sainz sixth, Perez recovered to seventh, Russell recovered to eighth, Sonoda with a very solid race and recovery after a tough qualifying, gets two points for ninth, and Lance Stroll rounds out the point scorers in tenth. Lando Norris, will he feel like he has been let down by the team? this afternoon yeah of course he will and you wouldn't expect him to feel anything different but he's no more deserving of that race win necessarily than Oscar Piastri will feel they both deserve it they both had opportunities to win it and it was almost a team if anything if there was any cock up it was the way the team handled that whole scenario in the latter stages I don't think either driver did anything that we should be too critical of well, we'll hear from our top three, starting with Lewis Hamilton, who's talking to his old rival and teammate, the 2016 F1 champion, Nico Rosberg. Wow, this is really Formula One at its best at the moment. It's unbelievably exciting out there to watch from outside. Lewis, P3 today? 
You beat the Red Bulls fair and square as well. Good feeling? Yeah. Big thanks to this amazing crowd this weekend. Uh, and a huge congratulations to, to McLaren on the 1-2. Uh, that's my old original family, so I'm really, really happy to see you, all the boys, all the, the whole team back up front. Um, and then for us today, yeah, the team has done a, a, a great job to continue on with uh, pushing this car. Ultimately, we didn't have the pace of the McLarens or did we have the pace of the Red Bulls, but we just were able to hold on at the beginning of the race. It was very, very tough to hold on, make those tires last. And obviously the close battle we had at the end uh, was a bit hair raising, but uh, that's motor racing. So I'm really happy. I'm grateful for the points. Um, big thank you to the team. Take us through that battle a little bit with Max. I mean, it was just unbelievable to watch from the outside. How nerve-wracking was it from inside the car? Uh, it's not nerve-wracking. I think when you see the pace at which they close the gap in certain corners, you, you just laugh to yourself because it's, <laughs> it's not something I can do. Uh, particularly the last sector, they were very, very strong, same as the McLarens. So, I mean, I saw him coming from a, a long way back and he was able to break a lot later than me. But he sent it up the inside. I stayed still, and he clipped the wheel and went over, so um, I think a racing incident, but, you know, yeah. Uh, let's have a word from Os for Oscar, uh, who just had his first win on a Sunday in his career. You have more than 100, uh, many more, so let's have a word for Oscar. Yeah, amazing. Congratulations to Oscar. Uh, he's been doing a fantastic job ever since he got here, to be honest, but he's been so consistent, and it was only a matter of time before he got a win, so this is a a great day for him. He had amazing pace from the get-go. So uh, really, really happy for him and his family. Thank you very much, Lewis. Let's hope for more progress from you guys in the next couple of races. Lando. What in general, let's start with a fantastic team effort this weekend. I mean, car has been phenomenal. One, two, that's, that's a super result as a team, isn't it? Yeah, uh, an amazing day for us as a team. I think that's the main thing, honestly. Um, I'm so happy it's been a long journey to, uh, to get to achieving this on, uh, on merit, and that's exactly what we did today, and I think um, a long way clear of the rest, so we did it in style as well. So um, a good one by the team, and of course to Oscar, he, um, he had a good start, he got me off the line, and he controlled the race well, so um, yeah, he was, uh, he was coming at some point, and uh, he deserved it today. Sorry, but I have to obviously ask. Um, we were thinking, is he maybe not going to let him through or what's going to happen there? We got the impression you thought it was not quite fair for the team to ask you to let him back through. Can you take us through your thinking there? The team asked me to do it, so I did it and uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm not going to dig further on that one then. Um, <laughs> how excited are you for the rest of the season? I mean, it really seems that you guys have the fastest car out there at the moment. Um, yeah. You still believe in the championship as well then? Uh, for sure. Uh, I mean, definitely as a constructor, um, two good drivers and, a, and an amazing team. So um, absolutely, I think still difficult, still a long way to go. And uh, today was our day. Um, Spy can change completely, you know, so we'll keep pushing and uh, we'll try to uh, do more of the same. OK, thank you very much, Lando. Congrats on the second place and team effort. Oscar, it is your first Formula One win on a Sunday. How awesome is that feeling? It's your first win. How special is it? Very, very special. Um, you know, this is, this is really the day I, I dreamed of as a kid, standing on the top step of, of an F1 podium. Um, yeah, obviously a bit complicated at the end, but uh, no, I put myself in the right position at the start. And uh, yeah, thank you to the team for an amazing effort, an amazing car. Um, yeah, it's a hell of a lot of fun racing with McLaren. So uh, I can't thank them enough uh, to giving me the opportunity to be in F1. And uh, yeah, to now be winning together 16, 18 months in is an incredible feeling. And how impressed are you with the car that McLaren's giving you at the moment? I mean, it just looks phenomenal out there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a beast at the moment. Um, yeah, it's fast in, in every condition. I think today, you know, we, we had it under control completely and uh, yeah, an amazing feeling to just be able to, to manage the race like that with, with both cars and, and secure a 1-2. I don't know when our last 1-2 was, but uh, I think it's a, a long time ago. So uh, incredibly happy for, for the whole team and uh, nice to get my first one on the board. You said it's all under control, but the team order situation didn't seem very much under control from the outside. How worried were you towards the end there that Lando might actually not let you pass? 
Uh, the longer you leave it, of course, the more you uh, yeah get a bit nervous. But uh, no, it was uh, yeah well executed by the team, and uh, yeah, I think it was was the right thing. I put myself in the right position at the start, and uh, yeah, with the different strategy we had, uh, yes, my pace probably wasn't as quick as I would have liked in the last stint, but I was still still in the right position to to make it happen. So uh, yeah, well executed from the team. So I suppose then the first of many wins, right, Oscar? I mean, you're proving to be such a special talent out there. I hope so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I've still still got some things to work on, but uh, no, I'll uh, I'll enjoy the win when I can. And uh, yeah, the, the team's giving me a great car, and uh, I really can't thank them enough for that. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to trying to do the best job I can, and I'm learning every every race I do. So uh, yeah, hopefully there's many more to come. Next up is Spa. Very different track, very different downforce level in the car. Do you expect yourselves to be right at the front there as well? I think yes. Um, I, I think we've proven this year that we can be quick in, in any circuit, any condition. We're always there at the front. And uh, I mean, Spa's not been the happiest of hunting grounds for us recently, but uh, I'm confident we'll be strong. Um, you know, we've got a car that's become a real all-rounder, so uh, I'm super confident and uh, I think the rest of the team should be as well. Congratulations, Oscar, on your first win. You. Absolutely spectacular. Thank you very much. Cheers. Oscar Piastri, a Formula One winner. And McLaren getting their first 1-2 finish since 1999. Mark, final thoughts? That can't be right. Apparently. No, I just read that on the screen. No, that can't be right. No, no it must have been 2012 or something. Yeah, I'll take that back. We'll look at that and look at it in the, in the podcast more. I think the graphic was wrong. Um, final thoughts, Mark. Final on, on thoughts. What a sensational Hungarian Grand Prix. I mean, so much to pick apart, way more than we've got time for right now. So you will have to check out the Checkered Flag podcast on BBC Sounds later. But amazing day for McLaren. It's a result of a huge amount of hard work to lock out the front row in qualifying and then deliver the one two. Yes, it was messy. Yes, there's lots they can learn and tidy up from it, but the result is the thing that counts, and it's the maximum points they could have scored from both of their two drivers today. Well, almost. George Russell taking the one point for the fastest lap. Well, at the end of it all, Piastri wins ahead of Norris. Hamilton rounds out the podium. Charles Leclerc fourth. Max Verstappen in fifth. Sainz, Perez, Russell, Sonoda and Stroll round out the point scorers with Fernando Alonso down at 11th ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Nico Hülkenberg 13th ahead of Albon and Magnussen tops the top 15. Valtteri Bottas is 16th ahead of Logan Sargent, Esteban Ocon 18th and Joe Guanyu 19th and last with run retirement in the form of Pierre Gasly's Alpine. Uh, as Mark alluded to, so much to discuss in our Checkered Flag podcast, which we will be recording straight away and that will land in your feeds and on BBC Sounds later on this evening whenever producer Paddy finishes editing it and we look forward to talking all about that Hungarian Grand Prix. Thank you for your company. Thank you, Mark Priestley. Thank you, Andrew Benson. Uh, we shall see you next weekend uh, for the Belgium Grand Prix, the final race before the summer shutdown. Uh, it's Max Verstappen, though, who still continues to lead the Drivers' Championship. But McLaren, what a weekend for them. This has been an IMG production for BBC Radio 5 Live.